Hello, everyone, and welcome to tonight's episode of Critical Role, where a bunch of us nerdy ass voice actors sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. Oops. <laughs> Just like that. Uh, so, yeah, before we jump into tonight's session, uh, let's go ahead and get through some of our announcements, beginning with our fantastic returning sponsor for Campaign 2. D&D Beyond. D&D Beyond. Sam. D&D Beyond is our oh, no. returning sponsor again this week. We love them. You can check them out at dndbeyond.link slash critical role. They cheer us on every week. I thought, why not cheer them on as no. well? <laughs> Watch Marisha die inside. <laughs> she wasn't even cheer squad. She was the Oh, dance. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, There's ready? There's a difference, bitch. Ready? Very smart. Okay. okay. <laughs> D&D. Beyond, D and D, Beyond <laughs> table on this side. Oh. Show me oh, no. your D and D pride. Yell D and D, Beyond, D and D, Beyond table on this side. <laughs> Please make this ad die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Surprisingly oh, really succinct. Yeah. Yeah, you should be a cheerleader. Yeah. Is that a record? I mean, more, that might yes, be a record. It might be. It might be. Yeah. The pithiest D&D Beyond spot. Yeah, pretty yeah. good. It's vying, <laughs> vying for one of the more violent word. ones. Yes. But not quite there. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> just gonna, that mic is just going to keep, keep vibrating for so long. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Sam. Back to you, Matt. And thank you, D&D Beyond, well for many reasons, mainly your endurance. Um, so, let's get to the rest of our announcements. Travis, you got some things to talk about, if I believe. Uh, I do, uh, yes, uh, for the month of November. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yes. You guys go <laughs> first. That, that beverage. Uh, for the month of <laughs> November, <laughs> holy shit, uh, Critical Role has partnered once again with one of our favorite charities, OSD. Yeah! Uh, they yeah. support active duty and uh, uh, civilian uh, veterans that are various stages of their life, and they have currently served over one million members of uh, the military and all their different branches, and we are glad to be a part of the next million that they will help. Uh, we have a month-long push, so please consider donating or at least sharing the message and you can see all of that goodness and all the details and more at critroll.com slash OSD. Hell yeah. Hold that thought, Travis. Marisha, you're up, go. Oh, I'll just, ooh, <laughs> jazz. Um. <laughs> it's fun to throw you off. On that note, in case you missed it, um, earlier this week we made an announcement that we are going to push part four the finale of Undeadwood by one week to November 15th. That's this, not this Friday, not tomorrow, but the Friday after next. Got it. We had some technical difficulties in post and a few very frustrating hurdles that we had to get over, um, but we are good and back on track, but didn't Is, want to destroy our team. Was it Brian's hair? Is it Brian's hair like you had to CG it all? Um, all we, oh. Well, he's gonna hate if I out him on this. What, his hair product caught fire? Did you what? have to do something to his hair? We did get a haircut while we were reviewing the edit. He just had his girl come to our edit so we can just <laughs> keep it. I have pictures of it. Sorry, B! I'm so sorry! Worth it, worth it. Burn it to the ground. Amazing. But yeah. Wow. Hardest life. Deep, but huh? that, is, <laughs> that is such Hardest a deep. Wow. How far have we been going on this, man? Uh, anyway. <laughs> Gotta stay fresh in the editing room. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, it was good times. But yeah, tune in on the 15th. That's this next Friday, 7 p.m. for part four of Undeadwood. I promise you. It's crazy. It's a doozy. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> it's a doozy. Yeah. It's fun. Travis, you're up. Uh, yeah, also <laughs> earlier this week, we uh, announced some Pretty major news uh, around our upcoming animated series, The Legend of Vox Machina. Yes. It's been picked up by Amazon Prime Video! Oh! Well, which is huge. Uh, and because of that partnership, yeah. we are able to create two additional episodes for the first season. So now 10 episodes has become 12 for season one. And a second season of 12 episodes! <laughs> 24 total episodes! <laughs> <laughs> is this too big? Is this too big? <laughs> I'm on fire. <laughs> we're, we're real excited. This is huge. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's yeah. been amazing. Uh, it was hard to keep under our hats. They've been amazing to work with. Um, 
We've also seen a few questions around whether the Kickstarter backers will still be able to see the first season for free, and the answer is yes, it is at the forefront of our mind. We wanted to make sure that everybody knows that backers will get access to the two-part special first. Uh, we are still working on how we do that, but with all of our brain powers combined, it shall surely yeah. be an easily surmountable task. And you will get access to the first season for free. All of those details to come, and if you uh, want to see where all the details are listed, you can head to our Kickstarter page. Uh, but I can tell you we've been hard at work with all of our friends at Titmouse, already making this thing amazing. Scripts are in, designs are in, location background art is in. It's so good! I can't wait it's so hard great. not to just like, so well, should I just show them on my, no, my phone? No, no, I just, no, 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 I just, no, no, okay. No. <laughs> no, in due time, there will be a rollout. We'll, we, will, we will be, right? We'll be rolling out some art pretty soon. Yes, right? yes, we I'm will actually be excited. doing it in, in very nice and exciting ways, but holy Fuck you guys, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> and we are super, super so excited. Crazy. So thank you again to Amazon Prime Video. Thank you again to our partners at Tipmouse. Thank you to the backers thank you for making this. Thank you all yeah. 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 the backers. Yeah. We're yeah. gonna make yeah. this as amazing as you possibly can for you guys. It, yeah. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Thank you, Travis. <laughs> uh, Laura, you got some updates, I believe. Well, yeah. It's not as cool as all of that, but it's still pretty cool. I disagree. Cool. Right. Take so, pride. Number one. Merch in the store, it's all merch in the store, but number one is uh, the finishing of our collection of our Mighty Nine Chibis. Oh, they're so, so cute. So, there's Ford, and there's Not, and there's Molly. I love that Molly. I love it. I, the I love the backgrounds. I don't know which one is my favorite. It's. They're also amazing. The, the pins were designed by, by our beautiful friend <laughs> Jenny Park, who is phenomenal. And thank you, thank you, thank you for that, Jenny. And um, so they're in the store now. Also, I have to back what? up for this. Oh, you got this is sitting in my lap, oh. keeping me so oh, warm yeah. and toasty. I'm actually cold right now. Oh, yeah. you can you can have this on during the show. It's this is our so our blanket. Good. It's so incredibly soft. It's the mat by Devin Rue, and I love oh. it. And I'm just so happy that we got this made. Is that for Rona? And yes. Okay. It's a blanket. It's I've a map. I've stolen many already. It's a blap. Here, do you want to snuggle up in it? Do you know how soft it is? It is mm. the soft. So, yeah. It blap. smells um, like uh, Taldora. Um, <laughs> ma uh. Legitimately fell asleep wrapped in that while we finished Berry Season 2. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's pretty so comfy. Wonderful. It's pretty comfy. Mm. Wow. I'm just excited we get to make this stuff, you guys. I can do anything under so. here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's kind of the whole point of it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do anything to the hole in the sheet. <laughs> anything we make uh, is mostly so we get one. Yeah, it's pretty really, that's kind of That's essentially kind of our, our whole merch plan is just make stuff we want to have. Yes. And hopefully you guys want yes, to. I have one of everything my in my toaster home breaks. office. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Running out of rooms to slow down. Uh, All right. Thank you so much, Laura. I've been giving freedom and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you could do what you do. <laughs> All right, then. I think that concludes our announcements. I think the first time that I didn't actually have to make any announcements myself, which was nice. That's why I got to fuck with you guys. But on that note, let's go ahead and dive into tonight's episode of Critical Role. <laughs> Welcome back. Children. 
Um, yes. So, last we left off, the Mighty Nine, in search of their allies and the coming struggle that seemed to be slowly building around Oban and the plans that he's making in pursuit of the, the will of the Angel of Irons. You went to find Yusa, the mage of Tide Peak Tower in Ikadranas, had vanished into the folding halls of Halas, the Archmage Bane, the Heirloom Sphere, or as you guys refer to it as the happy fucking fun ball. Um, <laughs> after spending what was essentially weeks and weeks of real time, and just for a few days within the ball's strange time dilation, you managed to make your way through all sorts of strange chambers and traps and battle mage hunter golems, and then eventually find your way to a lost den of Halas, the creator of these halls, who had found his soul locked within some sort of a, a trapped or sabotaged uh, relic of which he was using in his research. Acquiring this gem, questioning him, and making an alliance to a certain degree to gain guidance out of this strange sequence of rooms, you managed to find yourself to the prison of Soot. You freed Yusa, who had been silenced and put away as he began to peruse the interior of these halls on his own. You all managed to escape and found yourself outside of the sphere, partway up Tide Peak Tower, along with Allura Vysorin from the Council of Taldore, who had aided you as a, a friend through this small adventure. Now as you all gathered, her research had brought her to ask information and to bring materials and, and thoughts and imagery memories of this individual Yasha, of which you spoke of, that seemed to be involved in this mess with Oban. As you gathered hands together and prepared the ritual, you peered past the Veil of Deceit and revealed the Angel of Irons seems to have been a cover, some sort of a possibly fictional name an entity to mask the true intent of one Tharizdun, the Chained Oblivion, who has been seemingly amassing allies under the guise of the Angel of Irons. To what end? We do not know, necessarily. But upon this revelation, we return to the chamber partway up Tide Peak Tower. As Allura finishes saying to herself, I must inform the Council. There's a long, pregnant pause. The air itself is still. You can smell the salty sea air that comes in from the nearby docks and ocean of the Lucidian nearby. But amongst that is just this sense of dread and weight on your shoulders as the sheer volume and gravity of what you've all recently heard <coughs> comes to take your mind. Is that, is that a thing that's happening right now? You guys are now, you're in the tower. Oh, okay. you're, you're reacting to the ritual. What would you like to do? Oh, shit. Uh, there is Dune, there is Dune. Hi. I think, I feel like we really need to practice saying it. Th there is Dune. There is Dune. There is Dune. Where's the emphasis? Yeah, you where is the emphasis? know about him? We've been talking about him. He's come up a few times. Yeah, but he's like super powerful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> He's also a betrayer god. He's like crazy, crazy old, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know we can take him because he's real old? If someone <laughs> wishes to make a religion check. Me. All right. Okay. What is that? Uh, 23. 23? Okay. It's good to know. There it is. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Um, as part of this conversation, you do know that uh, Thurizdun, as an entity, while categorized as a betrayer god, does not belong necessarily or stemmed from the same uh, founding entities that the other elements of divinity stem from. While it is lumped with it, it is something other entirely, possibly older in the world, no one knows. Oh, cool. Um, so cool. Oh, it is gosh. strange, it is aberrant, and it is... Cosmic horror shit. It is very much so that. Shit. Um, do we know, does any, do any of us know, like, if <laughs> what separates Thera's Dune, Dune from, from our plane of existence? Is there a gate or a... a, a because of your religion, check okay. you do. <clears throat> As, uh, as, as Allura kind of leans forward and goes, 
Houston, we need to research how, how this entity was put away, was sealed. What, what, uh, what does it exist? You, at this question, pipe up and recall a couple of things. One, um, you, you know from the, uh, it was sealed once long ago in the founding, back when the, when the, the deities first began to give form to the world after de defeating and scattering the primal elementals that previously walked across of Exandria in its early days. Um, they had thought to have banished Therusdun, and then he returned during the Calamity. And in that time period, Ayun and Pelor spearheaded the assault against the roiling, hungry, black void that was the entity. Right, right, before but nothing. They had banished him, uh, but the struggle left Ayun with a terrible wound that would not heal. Oh, oh. forever. Like For as We've long got, as Therusdun exists, it seems the wound is harassed. It is said, because you've rolled so high on religion, we um, in the volcano, right? It was. Where we learned that. No. Sorry, keep going. It's okay. <laughs> it is also said that multiple sets of divine shackles hold the chained oblivion at the shackles. bottom of the abyss. Shackles. Their power anchored somewhere in Exandria. Wait, what? And you rolled what on a religion check? 23. 23, okay, that's all you know. I have a question out of story. Like, is this beyond, like everyone knows what the calamity is. For is the this most part. Is this beyond common knowledge, <clears throat> the existence of Thar's Dune? This is something that only people with esoteric knowledge or vast amounts of study know? People know of it in the way that people know about the boogeyman. Hmm. There is Dune would be the equivalent of the boogeyman and colloquially in most cultures. People wow. might say, like, you know, be careful, chain of living will get you if you don't go to bed early. But it's been so long ago and Can't only So it's not like for a lot us. of people may may not really con like like history that old that has been altered and rewritten based on whoever's in power in those locations, and certain interpretations can shift from place to place. Uh, many people who are of some level of intellectual knowledge and, and training acknowledge that it existed. Um, but as it is with a lot of mortal entities that are so caught up with their own day-to-day -day business, it seems that something so far off so that no one can it's weirder it. than us knowing stories of Zeus turning into a bull and sitting, you know, like stuff like that. Yeah. It's stranger than that. Correct. It wounded okay. Ion and the wound didn't heal. This thing's like yeah. Mike Tyson at the end of Punch Out. Nobody <laughs> wants to fight this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like Hercules Mulligan claims too weird to be real. You used to kind of pipe something. Uh, well, um, who do we know who belongs to this cult? If there is, if this is who you are chasing, who you are after, um, who do we know is connected to this entity? We know a few folks. We have, we have a, we have a running list. Yeah, one is Oban. Mm -hmm. Oban. Yeah, he's o a demon. Yeah. De demon? Devil? I Devil. Think he's a Devil. 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 He's Oban. He's got wings. Mm -hmm. Right. He can make himself look like other people. Yeah, sometimes. and he's like really good at manipulating people. Like, so he has control of our friend Yasha, right? Right. And when I was looking at them through scrying, you know what that is? Um, <laughs> when I was looking at them, uh, she was trying to fight him, right? And she was like, I don't want to be with you. And then um, the storm god was like, oh, almost took control. And then Oban like touched her chin and like something happened and is mm -hmm. she was instantly back to being under his control. And she's got the thing on the back of her neck. But she might have also been evil the whole time and just sort of, we didn't know that. I don't think so. What is this thing on the back of the neck, you say? This, it is like, and I describe it exactly like I saw it. <laughs> what you saw, it looked, the, the the faint orange glow, kind of rem reminiscent of uh, the old car cigarette lighters, that like faint kind of reddish, oh, yeah, like, yeah. heated tint to it. Very, very difficult to see, um, right at the base of the neck, underneath the hair. Lots and of little circles. Right, well, I mean, <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> but Yusa contemplates after what you say, Yusa. Uh, if this Oban is able to continue to control your uh, Ally, uh, is this by the same means or the others as to why he's able to bind the champions of other betrayers to his will as well? Maybe. If oh, I did see the light coming from the laughing hand, I think, didn't I? Well, if yes, that is the case, and the Sovan is a dangerous entity, 
Because if the Laughing Hand is, an, is a champion of Torag and this other one that you had mentioned. The inevitable uh, end. Uh, well, the Kedogast. The Kedogast, as you said, yes. Is born from, uh, was it uh, Asmodeus and. Um, Chosen Assassin. Beauregard of knows. Loth, of Loth yeah. and Asmodeus. There is no reason for these things to follow the intent of such a such a, a creature of madness and, and disparate will as Tarustun. And we killed him and he instantly came back. So, you need to be mindful of what it is that affects your friend, might also be affecting these other creatures, these other champions. Uh, Allura turns the head over to you, Sam. Are they even aware they're worshiping this thing? Like, if they follow the Angel of Irons, is that just their own cover, or have they themselves been duped into believing? Right. It is rare for something of, of sound mind to want to follow such utter destruction of the plains and beyond. Yasha had amnesia. She they... didn't remember her past ever since we met her. Maybe they all once were conscious followers, and something happened. Or maybe it was always manipulation. Well, if Obon is a devil, and he's from the hells, could it be one, that yeah. he's wor working or executing the orders of a devil prince, a king, a, someone from hell is trying to... Yeah, they like their hierarchy. Wipe yeah, out. Ferizdun is, is one of the entities that res resides at the bottom of the abyss, which is more of the... Um, the demonic heritage. That's weird, then. There's a lot of mixed up factions here, which is why I wonder. And you, actually, because you rolled so fucking high in religion. Um, and regarding Thruzdun. <laughs> <laughs> those who are foolhardy enough to follow such twisting destruction as the chained oblivion are often spurned, hateful, and chaotic souls who fall through the cracks of society and attention. A bit of inherent madness left unchecked kind of opens the door to the creeping void that draws those who worship and come to the altar of this unspoken entity. You also know, since it is rare for those of sound mind to worship an entity that brings only madness and destruction, the Chain of Oblivion and his followers often deceive sects into aiding their efforts from within other sects of worship, creating a false idol entirely. Um, and you know that the higher acolytes of Theris Dune as part of their ritual of ascension and to show their true faith, often remove their eyes so they can peer oh. through shadow and light with this boon. Ew. Inconvenient. I don't want to play anymore. I'm leaving now. <laughs> no, I'm taking I'm a fishing boat. Good crab before. <laughs> oh. Well, there's also, I mean, they're connected to this larger conspiracy with, within the, the war and <clears throat> factions within it, so God only knows how deep this runs and how many people are involved. Well, once again, it's not just. Attracted to fractured people that they could easily manipulate. And this is the same cult that's been pushing warfare on the. Yeah, we know that Oban was uh, referencing this individual who is within the Empire high up. Yeah, the blonde guy. Yes. Mm -hmm. What's his name again? Oh, wait, what is his fucking name? I like Blondie. Oh, wait, Blondie? Vince Nuthalis. Yeah. Uh, you still leans forward. You showed me, told me about this device that was opening rifts. Yeah. Across. Yeah. Yeah. And it was opening rifts to, you were saying. The abyss. The abyss. Yes. Yeah. What purpose do these rifts possibly have in this larger plan? They seem to have infantry, monsters, beasts that they were sending through. I yes, wonder if their location had something, if like oh, it was a greater number. network or something? They seemed randomly placed. Remember, they're somewhere in the backs of caves in weird mountains and stuff like Bottom that. Of a well. If you're, if under you're a, poking holes in a. Under a, a livery? If you're poking holes in a bucket, it doesn't matter where the hole is, just how many. You can go ahead and uh, both of you can make intelligence checks since you're the two of highest intellect. I beg your uh, pardon. Well. <laughs> As of now, yeah. Oh, okay. I will have you know I rolled two. Just straight intellect? Yep, with your intelligence modifier. 15. 15? Uh, 18. 18. All right. Caleb, in hearing this conversation, you begin to recall your studying of interplanar 
effects and how you know the veils between planes can shift and thicken and wane as such you know different events uh, through the uh, through the actual calendar year occur and such. Um, you do know based on the probably putting the pieces together that with each rift that probably opens within Exandria, between that and the abyss, the veils between the realms get slightly weaker with each one that remains, if temporarily. Um, and through this subtle influence of the chain of oblivion may begin to creep into the world. It's like if you have a, a leather strap and you punch enough holes in it eventually. That's another good. way to put yeah. it, sure. And because you rolled so high in religion, you also do know that the I also know that. <laughs> <laughs> the characteristics of the Chained Oblivion's influence, the madness that it instills subtly, um, is said to slowly corrupt people with bouts of uncontrollable hunger, uncharacteristic aggression, and eventually violent mania. Who wants to join that fishing boat with me? Anyone? The mackerel's are biting this time of year. What else? We think that uncharacteristic aggression on a fishing boat aggression under the water. Yeah, it's really clever. Thank you. I mean, I've been saying for a while that there's been reoccurring themes of hunger and famine and starvation and chains we the entire this. time we've known each other. Yeah, but we saw who's this been hungry other than me well, and, and stuff? And I'm really hungry all the time. I mean, you know, I'm too. actually kind of happy And I also kind of get pissed to. sometimes, I hide it, but what if I'm influenced by the chain of oblivion? Yes. I'm pretty good. It said that. In Jorhas, remember the, the, the furry mm -hmm. creature that. Um, what, the. What? The bugbear? Right, he, he had bouts of violence and anger. Yeah, and Asarius. Talk to that. Oh wait, was that Asarius? Is that what you just said? Yeah. I mean, even going all the way back to Trostenwald, with the nerd, nerd kill. Oh, and the gnolls. That I, you got me on that one. No, wait, I might have been making that part up. I don't. The gnolls were they hungry? Well, Most are. They came in and name? like. The well, they were aggressive, were, though. They were, they were aggressive. super aggressive. And weren't they un, unreasonably aggressive? And they were like the eating people. Okay, that's they were usual. they were not regular gnolls. <laughs> 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 Thank you. But yes, yes, the first time we met and we went to that circus, we were fighting that the devil monster toad, was the devil toad who kept lashing out and eating people. Oh. If this influence continues to spill out into this world and people grow more and more aggressive, that's going to lead to even further conflict. What if, like, the Bright Queen is, like, affected by it? Was she eating every time we saw her? Well, I don't think she was ever eating when we saw her. <laughs> How about she we, did have a Slim Jim in her mouth every time we, we saw her. To combat the overall aggression. That's my headcanon. But if we commandeer the Statue of Liberty and we walk it in the middle of Manhattan, <laughs> so like, you lift me up. Like positivity, yes, I like it. I love it when you rough ass. <laughs> Let's have a fish concert. All right. <laughs> uh, so okay. we are talking about some ancient, Mess. forgotten thing. <coughs> so what's the uh, what's the play here? What's the strategy? Well, what's I, the I, mean, I know what I would do. I mean, I that question. If if the abyss and is on the demonic side of things, and the devils and the demons have a spat, is there is there any way that we would employ or try and reason with the devilish side of things to gain access to? Yeah, but Oban is a devil. To, right, but he's obviously put, trying to pull someone out of the demonic side. Yeah. The abyss is on the other half. So weird. This cult, this this cult, it, we would have to take down this cult, right? They're they're making it easy for Therizdun to to gain access to our plane of existence. Or how do we take down this crazy least, cult? We did make it easier to kill the Laughing Hand. We don't know how many there are in this cult, or where they are. Or we know where one of them. them. We know where one of them is, and Who's it that? would be a. Blondie, but I mean, we could get Blondie and get a bunch of information. And they did say the last time we scried on them that they were making their way towards the finish line. Making their way. Do we know where the individuals are? Where the next plot is? Where the next anything is? I bet he would. I, I, I could scry on. We them. can scry on Yasha. We Yasha. can scry on Blondie. Who is Sif Tsar? 
Uh, I have a spell book here as a dead mage. He was worshipping the Crawling King. <sighs> this is stressful. The Crawling King is a different entity. Oh, that has nothing to do with it. So it's Chained Oblivion, Crawling King. Torog. Torog is the Crawling King. Right, but it's but Torog is more or less still related in this. If through the Laughing Hand, yeah, Laughing Hand was a champion of Torog. If if Obo right, is so it's she's still a player in this. Possibly, maybe, maybe, but it, everyone's away. coming from all the every. Right, just be a red herring. Is a servant of Grez. 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 Oban was a servant. So I learned to pronounce it at least in my training. We don't know. That's. Oh. It doesn't Sounds matter. They're like former the masters. Now movies. everyone works for Therizdun. Okay. Right. That's what it feels. But like. I was yeah. just. You no, know, those were all. Like those everyone were all is under Therizdun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter who they used to be aligned. We with. don't know where the next event is happening or where to cut anyone off. Should we try and look in on the few that we are? Probably. On. If we could peel Yasha away somehow, she would know more. You said you have a, any thoughts? Muse is staring at This is a lot, obviously. Um, let me do some research as well, some meditation, and reach out to a few allies I have that may have some esoteric knowledge. Um, but I have to do this alone. I can. I do have a friend in the Empire still, though I am not really invited as much as I once was. What's um, their name? I could give you a missive. Uh, Omid Haas. <gasps> oh, um, wait, we know that. Who? It's Headmaster of. Wait, oh! Hmm. The Solstress Academy. Not the nope, Solstress, nope, the nope, other nope. school. Halls of Erudition. Yes, yes Halls of Erudition. Yep, 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 that one. I could write you a missive while I could not go, um, as it would not be. Best for me to be there. Um, the introduction would be enough to gain an audience and perhaps glean some information from within the the range of influence that the assembly seems to have gathered. An audience as well. for us or for you? For you. We. He, he can't go. He's not. Um, <clears throat> chooses not to go. Who? Oh, oh sir. you sir. There are. There are means within the hall to disable such glamours that would allow me free entry and wandering. So, it is best I not cause a stir. But you can go as my uh, sure. allies. Aren't we known by Ormid Haas? Uh, is it, um, yeah, will you, um... We can be open with you, sir. Will you leave the room for a second? Is that what you're going to say? You want me to leave the room? <laughs> no! <laughs> 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 Just say it. I, just think, say it. I think we're known by Ormid Haas. Yeah, I don't think he likes us. Our last interaction with him did not go well. I, there wasn't, there wasn't a fight. We were, we were at a, we were at a cocktail like party. Likes cats, and we like... The fuck are your notes? We were at a cocktail party or something with him, that. and Trent Ichthon. It was, oh. it was after the tournament. Yeah. Did we? Break into this guy's connect? house? No, we just talked no. to him. You talked and to him. Remember, at the party. he said something to Yash. Did he say something to Yash? Trent said something to Yash. Trent said something to Yash that was creepy. Yes, but Ormit was there, and I know he, he was, was like wingmanning Trent. He was like uh, with us, and then we were like, Trent. oh, he likes cats because he pet Frumpkin, and then we were like, let's remember that for next time. He likes Frumpkin. <laughs> I don't remember us uh, making a note of that at all. Well, I that, did. That did happen. <laughs> that did happen. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Impressive. It's good to have a Marisha in every party. Yes. <laughs> I've also been really researching but this. We did. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, go ahead. No, go on. Go no, on. I was just justifying. Oh, I, I was just gonna say we didn't we didn't attack him. He doesn't know that we're enemies. They're we're not this, enemies. No, I don't think right. But Trent, no, would know that Caleb is, wouldn't he? Trent saw Caleb and didn't say anything. No, he, he did not. If no. there is a concern with this Trent, who I believe I know who you're speaking of, then just avoid him. Do not oh, bring him up. So we can go see. He's like super duper powerful, didn't you know that? So is the rest of the assembly. Yep. So am I. Well, yeah, but you're nice. Well, do not think the entire assembly is useless. They have a few uh, dubious figures, but not all of them are bad eggs. Oh man, we're going to the halls of erudition. Eridium? That's in Zadash. Eridium. Oh, there it goes. And uh, 
I feel like I should at least implore aid from the Council of Talore. Um, I don't know if they can get directly involved in Imperial Wild Nut politics so brazenly, especially during a time of war, but uh, I'll see what can be done. The Council, huh? Who's on the council? Who's on the council? Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you give us like a list? Who would that be? Do you have a list? I've never heard of this. She teleports away. (laughs) (laughs) Mercy! (laughs) Uh, Left with you, son, wentz forth, who's kind of in the corner in his chair, just kind of watching the whole thing bright eyed. Um, He just goes, um, Wow. If you are going to Ormed to ask for his expertise, knowledge, anything about what's going on within the Empire, uh, just use my name, use this. And you see, the whole time you guys have been having this conversation, he's like been mage handing with a quill and ink over on the counter. It's kind of writing its own letter about 20 feet away from him. He then drifts over to. <laughs> You fucking motherfucker. <laughs> it's, oh. it's Brian Foster's payback. <laughs> Don't put this on him. It's a cute turn off, it makes any difference. I know Brian's brand of payback, that ain't it. <laughs> As the parchment drifts through the air and then folds, a ribbon ties itself on it and it lands over on Jester's lap. Me! <laughs> how, how closely should we trust this person? How much, uh, how much information should we give them? As much as you deem necessary, uh, as much as that would be useful for what you're going after. We're be guarded, but Omid is one of the uh, less problematic members of the Assembly. We're, we're naturally mistrusting people, so it's always uh, important Good. to ask. We've also you have survived this long. A fair number of people that are not who they seem or pretending to be something else. Is there a question that we could ask, or uh, perhaps some way of verifying that he is who you say he is? I would say, (laughs) I couldn't help but notice around your neck this uh, tiny furred creature. Oh, I thought you were talking about my ruby necklace, which is really beautiful, but yes, this is Sprinkle. Omid would react favorably to such a creature. Oh, he likes all little furry creatures? I think Sprinkle's been dead since the Happy Fun Ball, right? Don't say it out loud. It's just a big thing, really. <laughs> if she hasn't found it, just it leave him there. He's just no. stiff, hanging from a little string around his neck. This solid collar it's now. Produces it's a bunch of mats. Hides inside my armor whenever we're in battle, and really? he's super sure. duper protected. I yeah. can it. Vex and he's in there with trinket. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't been fed in months. I <laughs> It's assumed that she's been feeding him. It's like that Tamagotchi. Anytime you had. I eat, imagine that I'm also giving Sprinkle food, okay? Sprinkle gets attention and he's like, please. <laughs> Let me tell you, the best part about playing DD with friends is making your friends keep track of all their imaginary animals' responsibilities. <laughs> Um, he likes he likes furry things. Mm-hmm. The smaller likes, the cuter the better. He's, furry. <laughs> he's, a, he's a furry lover. Okay, cool. Yeah, so this Ahmed is one of the uh, less problematic. Which ones do you deem problematic, and what do you estimate their problems to be? It depends on your perspective. Um, Ludinus is very intelligent. I do not know what his main intent is, but he's been around since the beginning. But he's also the one that keeps the balance with the king. He is the one that keeps the peace from an archmage's standpoint. But I, uh, I'm wary of anyone that powerful, both from an arcane and political standpoint. Uh, most of my contact has been with Omit. Trent seems just creepy. <laughs> Jenna, Jenna seems unique, if a bit distracted. Uh, Uludon's a buffoon. I think those are the only ones that I've actually met in person. How do you know Ahmed? Uh, we trained together. Or I trained him for a bit, I should say. I've been alive much longer than he has. 
Um, but he's uh, he's stern, but has a good heart. Wants the best for his students, pushes them hard. I respect his techniques, though his students may not always. We appreciate your candor. Of course. Oh, and uh, so I've had a day to recover and get my wits about me, and kind of sits up for a minute. I want to thank you for uh, coming into the halls after me, for freeing me from the result of my own arrogance. It, I, it means a lot. I suppose the only question to ask is, will you be going back in? <laughs> not for a while, and certainly not alone. Um, however, I think it's only fair. And you Reaches behind one of the counters and takes this kind of, kind of weighted satchel and kind of throws it into the center of where you guys are talking. <laughs> All bearings. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, a portion of Halas's fortune that I managed to recover. Not in the room. No, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Speaking of which, looks over to the unconscious body of Halas. <laughs> <laughs> on the floor. Oh, right, where's, yeah. the, where's the jewel? I already handed it over. Like, no. yeah. Mm, I think no, not I didn't. No, you had it. Oh, you got it right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Also, just out of curiosity, if you touch it, the there's body. still a voice in there, right? Mm-hmm. Let's find out. Hello? Hello. You are the one you called yourself not, is that right? Yes. Well. Oh, good. Where are we? Have we been successful in your escape? How would you do it? Do what? How would you change a body, if you could? Oh, well, it depends on what you wish to change it into. You see, there. Not. As I know you've looked into my research, there are ways to, I believe, take a mortal body and make it perpetual. Maybe put the Is jewel down. Is it a down. spell or a, or a ritual? Caleb? Both. I they think are not this is going on long enough. Small one. Do Death. you know? Do you know what what it is? Do you know it, or would you have to find it? I would have to take a look at my notes. Yeah. I was not entirely this feels finished. But if you release me from this Possibly gem, I'll I will help, help you to perform whatever you. this may Maybe be. Maybe you just put it down. I need something more concrete than that. The name of a spell, we something. It is unnamed at the moment, but it was part of my design for myself we and to talk to should you be interested, little not goblin girl, set it down. yours yeah. as well. How do I get you out if I wanted to? Dispel this Dispel jewel. the jewel. As I hear Near. that, I cast I, silence. Near your, I snatch. I'm going to attempt to snatch the jewel. Make a sleight of hand check. You make an insight, or you make a perception check. Oh, perception! Mm-hmm. Wow, eleven. Yuck. Well, what'd you say? Sleight of hand. Yeah. Fourteen. Fourteen. As you're mid-conversation, your voice goes gone, you like look over to Caduceus and you look back and the gem's out of your hand. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um. Are we all silenced? No, just you. Just you. Yeah. Very good timing. Hang on, wait, 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 just let her get out of her system for a minute. <laughs> I think. No, it was great, good it, work. If you can read lips, I that. see a lot of Fs and Ss, yeah. a couple yeah. Gs. Ferns, Ooh. soliloquy. A T and a C. I don't think she's that angry. Gentle. Yep, no, those hands are not that's, that's easy crazy. to mistake. I think she's gotten it out of her, oh. Not yet. I think that she's gotten it cracker. out of her system. <laughs> or cracker. <laughs> it's baby sandwich. <laughs> You can drop the spell, I think. Your face is stupid! <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. A very dangerous and powerful mage now knows your name. It's just good to know that he is still in there, which is where we want to keep him, right, Not Because if he gets out, he knows your name. If you want, I'm more than welcome. We're happy to uh, jettison both that body and that gem far into the scattered plains. I have the means. Did he sound like he knew what he could do? He sounded confident that he could do something. He was telling you what to do. He spoke of dispelling that. Confident that he eats people. 
He definitely eats people. He does? Yeah, yeah he has a restaurant called The Carving Board and The Happy Pop Ball. <laughs> I love The Carving he Board. He built yeah. a prison yeah. Yeah. and left chests <laughs> that murdered so sad you, you never went in there. the blink of an eye. It's the first time I've had an opportunity to, to be myself again, it, and I can't just leave it alone. It's the it's the thing. It's not an opportunity. This is the thing. And do you, you think sir? that the man who built that place would be willing to help you? Maybe. He would be beneficial to you. He's an altruist. That is the impression you got from the person who chained a dreadnought and built a lever to open its mouth like a door, who has a prison. I don't judge his taste in decor. Not, not you have to understand the difference between an opportunity and a temptation. That was a temptation. There's a, there's a big difference. Look, we have one option, right? Mm-hmm. We know that this is here. Not if he sends it away to a far off place. Yusa? Yes. Do you know of a spell that would um, turn somebody into something else? Uh, there are. This polymorph is a relatively. Yeah, but simple. permanently, like put them back in their right body. Someone is in the wrong body. It's a bit beyond my immediate scope, but there is a, uh, I've heard whispers of like a, a truest polymorph, though it, even that is only until dispelled. It is not a permanent this, endeavor, but it can become most anything. This one has been dabbling in his time within the sphere. I have notes of his that are incomplete, but it felt like he was on the right track. You have these notes? Yes. And what is your speciality? Transmutation. You're fairly bright. Is that a challenge? Always. I'm not going to peel inches of your flesh off and eat them. <laughs> it's so romantic. I'm not as far along as him. I'm not nearly as deranged, and that's saying something. All right. You can't change if you're dead, dead and gone. All right, so you'll still work at it and try? Have a little faith. All right. I trust this crazy wizard, I guess, more than that one, so. And you are a smart goblin. Will you promise us that if we want to come back, do any more research on Halas, that we have full access? Full access to? This, I don't know, what do you plan to do with this? I'm going to send it into the... I was going to get rid of it entirely. Yeah, like, uh, way out. Well, the heart was technically sent off into nothing and Halas found it. Well, here, unless I am mistaken, that spirit can only return to that body, correct? Yes, that's so. what he said. You watch Yusa kind of open his hand, and you watch as the unconscious body of Halas begin to blacken and crackle, as it begins to burn into cinder and ash on the floor. In but a matter of 20 seconds or so, the smell <laughs> of burned flesh fills the chamber is disgusting Ugh. before it slowly filters out the open I window. Can go well, look at that. Now there is no longer worry of him returning to his form. Wow, that was um, effective, decisive. Maybe don't touch the stone and see if Halas needs an update. Let's just let him Maybe. continue to think otherwise. You just heard the tiniest like, see if he's crying. Let's let's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. let's actually, actually gonna, not. Touch hang on, everyone, the everyone, be quiet for a second. No, no let's. Hello, Bo. Hey, Halas. 
So, uh, might I speak to the goblin girl once more, if you do not mind? We yeah, were yeah, having yeah, a yeah, conversation. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, you know what? She actually just we went out goodness. for. Silence. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Doesn't feel so good, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Every word. Your arms are weird! Huh? You can't say anything back, can you? Every word will come back to haunt us. Borgata cannot can't hear, hear you. I don't actually know if that'll. She the, can't hear anything I'm saying. The voice continues through the gem because it is telepathic to you. I would. I would. I, I would we'll say, but that. Yeah, just. Give this, uh, Usa. Yeah. Let's do that. Usa. The mage hand Usa. grasps it, and as the mage hand kind of lifts in the air, he will not actually make physical contact That's with the, the stone. That's the way to do it. Drop silence. Um, Puts it onto a table. You have the same mage I was hand. Just pulls. Say you were going out to pee, and that you'll be back never. How do you? Been it, clever. Yeah, but you know, you cut off my joke. I man. didn't cut off your joke. <laughs> you did. Cut off my joke. I think the less said to something that may be able to tell the difference between the truth and a lie, and probably a lot more information just by us touching it. That's a lot. That's not the sort of thing you should be touching. Would have been the so last clever. thing he heard. He would have got a good joke. And when no. he eventually and gets spinning. out, and then he'd be like, "Oh, yeah, shit, now, now she he's like me wondering. Me he's wondering what the punchline was, and he'll wonder forever. No, he'll eventually get out and find you. He's not going to get out. Don't worry. He's in. Uh oh. You hear these two heavy impacts. You watch as you're having this conversation. You has like mage-handed the gem over onto the nearby table corners, draws a line through the air with the other hand, mutters an incantation, and you watch as a almost spectral-looking chest kind of apparates through the air as he draws the line, <laughs> lands on the ground. It opens, <laughs> mage hands the gem over onto the inside, it closes, and then, that and then vanishes. Wow. But yeah. still, that was good. remember that we found that in the middle of a magic fun ball, Inside a dreadnought, inside a magic space. I mean, it's these oh, things. I was there. Things get found. It's a Johasian wooden doll. We should be off. So we have much to learn. That chest, though, that was. Uh, that's not a pocket for you to access later. That was a random. Toss. Oh, that's a pocket for me to access later. Hopefully, not until it's needed. But until you decide you have no further use of this individual. I will put it somewhere nobody else can find it but myself. Excellent. And you don't have any use? you trust me. I think trust. that Yusa would prefer to inhabit his own flesh. Yes, so. I would. Halas? No, I'm talking about Yusa. Oh, yes. Not yes. wanting to be possessed by an all-powerful yeah. being. We will Thousands trust you ago. if you tell us who the members of the Tal'Dorei Council are. <laughs> <laughs> I regret to inform you that my only experience has been with Allura and members of the Pansophical. It's unfortunate. The council, I do not. Uh, just I prefer to us. avoid just politics. One just one. <laughs> no newsletter coming on my raven door. Straight to spend. <laughs> Your old friend with Allura, she told you over to An older day. seeker assumed. <laughs> Master of spies, acid scarred and tattooed, but now with a goatee. Ooh. Gray as it may be. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, so where are we off to? To Zandash! Yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to go see the guy that's creepy. Not creepy. He's normal. Loves I cannot say animals. he's not creepy. Some degree, maybe, but just more trustworthy. Do your best to gather information, find out. Who's doing what, where they're going, anything, any clues we have to what their plan is, especially if it's happening soon, based on what you had said. The last thing we want is to be caught off guard. Do you have any means for us to travel to Zadash quicker than 14 days on horseback? Well, no, we can be in 50 to go about Oh, that's right. I'll send a message to... Whoa. Uh -huh, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. To Zenoth. Zenoth, because, mm -hmm. okay. Archivist, Zenoth. Yeah. Yeah. We're setting totally. off. Got a wiry, mousy guy. And like, a little yeah. annoying. Yeah, 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 yeah. We met him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I'm gonna guy. send a message. What's his name? Zenoth. Zenoth. Yeah. Hey, Archivist Zenoth. This is the Mighty Nine. I don't what? think. What? What? I don't think Sorry. you like us, but. <laughs> Are we allowed to come there yet? Because we have him. Yeah, that's only half of what we have in. Important. There you go. We have important. Important. You wasted a what what? I thought it was both 
Firefox. Sorry, you're trying to hide man. Your message. You echo the I, I hide <laughs> my own. Xenoth responds. Oh, um, that that should be fine. Um, everything has been smoothed over. So uh, yes, please do come on ever. Whoa. What is it? He sounded like super duper like brown nosy, and he was like, "Hey, what? Everything's been smoothed over. You're welcome anytime." Ooh, who did he get in trouble? Time to leave he got here now. That's right. Oh, we're awesome. <laughs> oh my god, he loves you now. I wonder if Dyron told him that I'm in charge now. Probably. I mean, Dyron probably yelled at him really good. Yeah, 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 and was like. You call all the other branches and you tell them that Bo's awesome. Yeah. This is how you want me to send a message to all the other? <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. fine. That's that's fine. So, so just let me know I can send off. Yeah, should we go now? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're, all, like, we're eventually we're gonna rested, want to sleep. Right? We're okay. Did we? Did we rest? No. 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 Did we fight? Well, I mean, we just got out of. I mean, a lot happened. Yeah, but I'm at, I'm full. I got I'm some not. spells gone. I got some spells gone. Plus, if we go to Orly, we're going to. Oh, wait, we don't have dusted gems. Hey, you said you have any gem dust? And a diamond. And a diamond? Oh, Do you have a diamond? Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me look. Winsforth? Mm, yes, Master, what can I do for you? <laughs> um, could we perhaps look around for uh, a diamond? What's 300 ish. Uh, what they requested in And also just some gem dust. Which, any specific type of gem. Can I remember what Orly said we needed? The different kinds, right? Yeah, yeah, all sorts yeah. of different uh, kinds. I can go things. look it up real fast, because I forgot. I write a, write a, a, a swank rhyme about it. <laughs> <laughs> we, somewhere there was a printout, but that was, was a while ago. Not of the, not of the <laughs> tattoos. No. Uh-uh. I did, I thought I told you. That's all right, there was a You thing. told. But I don't think you there's a printout. That's okay. We'll We're the on. worst. There we go. Think of all the Tusk juice, the tattoos out there right now. They're just disappointed in you, Laura. <laughs> what? Why? I'm not taking good notes. Look at look at my shit ass notes. It's of amazing. Course that I love your notes. And I just saw there we go. <laughs> so for for Orly's talents, um, it is uh, ruby dust. For strength, emerald dust for dexterity, diamond dust for constitution, sapphire dust for intelligence, jade for wisdom, aquamarine for charisma, fire opal for resist fire, starfire sapphire, or black black star sapphire for resist cold. And the amounts generally range between the 2200 gold to 2500 gold for all the statistical benefits and 5000 for the resistances. It doesn't. It, it, it won't push you beyond natural, natural, uh, natural levels either. Will it? The tattoos. Yeah. I mean. Ooh. Really? Okay. It's only all, plus baby. one. What was the So even if you hit, if you hit the maximum of, of, of twenty, you get a full sleeve. 20, only get 20, twenty-one doesn't increase doesn't any really modifier benefits. Right. So. Oh, true. Okay. What if you got two tattoos? The quarter sleeve. And you can only get one tattoo per individual. Which mm-hmm. you have. Okay. I don't know what all the other ones were. That's just as fast as I could write, and it was pretty much nothing. <laughs> well, if you tell me what statistic you're looking possibly interested in, I can. I find. wrote down diamond for constitution. That'd be good for me. I reopen that jade for wisdom. Jade for wisdom. Oh, jade for wisdom. Wait, what you wrote down was wrong. <laughs> I suck. My notes are just doodles. <laughs> 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 Pick one. We learned which, that, which, tonight I we learned that Laura is a veteran. I need diamond dust. Anybody else? Anybody else need a stat that they would want? Of course, them? but it sounds extremely expensive. Well, I don't know how much money we just got from Halas. Yeah, JG Whitworth probably has some diamond dust. Well, on it was Halas's standby. stuff. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I could use charisma, strength, well, anything. Yeah, you wolf, you wolf. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stat shame me. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> okay. All right. So what is it you guys are wanting to do? A 350 gold diamond and some diamond dust. A 300 if they have gold. It. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. We'll say, uh, given the help of use, uh, Wensforth goes ahead and brings you a diamond worth 350 gold pieces. 
It's, it's the largest one I could find. Um, is this all right, Master? It's like, yes, give it to them. I'll take it. Because you gave me yours. Oh, well, all right. And as far, which gem did you request? Uh, diamond dust for me. Uh, well, that is the diamond. I, don't, the, I would have to take a gem to turn it into dust. So I could convert uh, that, but that would still only be about 300. Anybody 300 else? Oh, yeah. God, we need a lot of ju- gem yeah. dust. I mean, you could ask him if he has an overabundance of rubies. Did anybody check and pick up the satchel? Oh no, check in the fucking bag! Look in the bag, look in the oh, bag. Oh, I opened the bag. Uh, it's all ruby dust. <laughs> yeah, checking it, it looks, it's, first off, no gold. Oh. Um, at first you're like, oh, it's a bag of silver, but then like oh. the light hits it and like it's much more polished and much brighter in its color. Oh, shit. Um, it is a it is a satchel of platinum. Oh, oh fuck! Uh, yes. If you want to. If, if you want to take the um, the time to to count it yes. later on, you can. Yes. Okay. Or unless you want to count it in the middle of this chamber in front of everything, it's up to you. But one. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, wait. Platinum. Man, I really want to know. For the ease of everything, it comes to about twenty-one hundred platinum. Wait, twenty-one hundred platinum. Correct. Which comes 21, to about twenty-one thousand gold? gold pieces. <laughs> wait. So wait. <laughs> Oh my god. I think that's so funny. We've been poor. <laughs> this campaign, yeah. We've been pretty D&D poor. Oh, you guys have been D&D poor for a oh, long time. So <laughs> and have been sitting those three digits. Yeah, we and, have. and you pulled them out of so a very, very rich series platinum. of platinum. Oh. Pause, and that's your split. Say that again. Everybody three. gets 350 platinum. Oh. Okay, that's happening. Oh, shit. <laughs> wow. I'm saying regal rich. 350. <laughs> oh man. Oh wow! Oh, cool. That's the number. You got some spending cash. Zium. Let's go to. Let's go to. I'm gonna go buy my souls. Let's go buy everything. I mean, if you're heading to Sadash, yeah, it'll be there. I think we can afford to. Are we gonna go do this tattoo? Sorry, we haven't met quite yet. Those prices have gone up. Premium. I want the premium Gilmore brand. I mean, it's up to you guys. Stop to one of our many. Would it help you? <laughs> dozen or so franchises. I mean, <laughs> yes. it's just constitution. I can wait. I mean, we're here. We're here. We should probably go check in on our boat, right? Do we owe like taxes or like Let's marina take, let's rental? Let's take a second or? to collect ourselves. Where do we go? We have to go to a jewel shop first to buy jewels. It's a thing. Maybe we should just go to Zadash. What about your home? Say hi, mom. We just said. Oh, I guess it's been a while. I mean, you do know that Nicodronus, because it is a port town, there's a lot of trade. You could probably find a number of gems if you're looking for it, but you don't have to if you don't want to either. Do you want to try? You want in the. I mean, I could get that too, you guys. I wouldn't mind one either. Sure. Had my let's mind on one for a while. Let's go see Orly. Okay. But first, let's stop and get gem dust. Okay. And then go back and like get it done. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so, you, well, for one thing, your ship is, your ship, the, the ball eater, um, has been out at sea for quite some time. Oh. You're uncertain as to the location of it currently. Yeah, I remember it's still working and moving. Oh, around. I thought Orly was just hanging out here. No, I didn't know it was no. still going around. Well, they, they've been doing oh, shipping oh, runs oh, and shit. bringing things up along the coast and around, and earning you guys money while you've been away. Passive income, y'all. He's oh. been getting us money too. Wow. Shit, we might as well just buy a Nicodronus. Oh fuck! Let's go check in and see what we got. <laughs> Forty gold. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But we don't know if they're there, so we should go to the port. Sure. All right. We'll go to the docks. How much diamond dust did I need for Constitution? Uh, constitution would have been. See if our boat's there. Twenty five hundred. Yeah. Like has stuff. Okay. In case he's like, oh, Sorry. I happened to come across twenty-five. That's a hard one. Cost twenty-five hundred gold worth of diamonds. Yeah, great. Cost the yes. Stats are twenty-five hundred versus two thousand four hundred. Some of them are twenty-two hundred gold worth of Strength and dexterity are twenty-two. <laughs> Wisdom, charisma, twenty-two. Constitution, intelligence, or intelligence. So they're all twenty-two except for constitution, which is twenty-five. I need it. And then the resistances are five. Five, yes. But that is a permanent resistance to a specific kind yeah, of damage. Yeah, that's impressive. Leave the tide peak, and we head towards the port. 
All right. So you guys make your way towards. There are two ports, if you recall. Yeah. There's sure the, we do. There's the the, Wayfarers op- the open key. <laughs> yep. So as not to make people hate me for oh, forever. Oh, Quay, you mean? That one. Which... <laughs> or the Restless War. But they're both correct. We learned that. We did. They're both correct. Yeah, we True, and I've used both, that. so there you go. <laughs> um, a, a gift to everyone on the internet to not be too angry. Or everyone's angry, I don't know. <laughs> I'm used to it at this point. Um, or there's the Restless Wharf. The Open Quay is the, is the closest, the one you're closest to, and that's the one that's actually Southern. owned by Yusa. Yusa kind of oversees this entire section of the city and keeps it away from the guilds that run the rest of Nicodronus. Let's go there. Yeah, let's go there. Okay. Where did we leave Orly? Uh, Restless Wharf. But as you approach the seaside, you look out for the ship. Uh, who wants to keep? An, well, who wants to look for the ball eater? Um, I'll look. I'll look. All right, both of you guys make perception checks. Nineteen. Eleven. Okay. You look out for a bit, and like it's just now the sun's getting a little like uh, high in the sky, and as such, the, the the brightness of just off the, the the surface of the water itself kind of blinds you a bit when some of the reflections catch you from the waves that are coming in. Uh, Caduceus, you do see the ball eater, and it is heading out. Oh, it's maybe like a half mile out of port. Yeah, it's hey, a fireball. Oh no! I send the message. <laughs> I send the message to Arthur. Yeah. Uh, Orly, come back! We're here in Nicodranas and we see the ball leader and you're sailing away. Are you. Come back! Because we That's want to enough. talk to you. Orly, come back! Orly, come back! Oh, Jesus. The voice comes back. He's gonna wake up. <laughs> oh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's good to hear your voice, then. Lady, <laughs> we're going ahead and turn that around for you. Give us a m- m- moment. <laughs> you see the ship slowly begin to turn, making its way back towards. It's so really calming to watch. It's so it's so good. Good. Um, for the purposes of searching for, you know, gems, you per gem, per gem. You probably couldn't find more than three thousand gold worth of it to be ground into dust, and it's a strange request to like purchase gems from like a jeweler and be like, "Thank you. Can you grind it up for me too?" <laughs> I mean, sure, um, but that means with with what's available, Nicodronus, you couldn't double up on a statistic. Right. Oh, okay. So, if who wants what? Do we have enough no, money to get it. everything? <laughs> like one of it. one of every gem. Well, for if you guys pick what you want, then we can. I don't need anything. That I'm fine. Yeah. I want to get constitution. I want wisdom. Get my key saving throw up. Y'all are spending twenty five hundred gold each. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just checking. It's like half of what we just made. But it's a stat, man. Yeah. It's a full point. Uh huh. Get to bump some shit up. To can you increase anything and go to evens? I'm kind of perfect. I'm pretty happy. I'm just gonna wait for a and sword. And the resistances are, going. <coughs> Matt. The resistances are for our, our, our damage type. Resistance yes. to fire, resistance to cold. Fire and cold are the two you can choose. Got it. Um, should I do strength or charisma? Charisma. I mean, <laughs> like seriously. Uh, okay, I'll do charisma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, for those who, are, who who have decided to to possibly get a tattoo from Orly, oh, man, possibly get a fucking group tattoo. tattoos are always a shit show. Just in, just <laughs> should, we get, should we all get the same design? Or should we get something you similar? Never look at enough time. Something <laughs> Beauregard, should we get what? What should we? What should the design be? Oh, it's the girl. We're all gonna get a girl's tattoo day. Wait, is it just the three of us? Yeah, okay. yeah. Caleb, uh, are you getting anything? Well, I for the first one. Should we do Chaos one. Crew? Chaos Crew! Uh, Fuck, that's pretty good. That's pretty cool. As a note, it's not just like a single tattoo, it's a series of tattoos that have to like cover enough of your body to actually have an impact, depending on what you get. Like for wisdom, it's probably going to be more like a, like a back of the neck. Oh, that's, oh, that's tight. Exactly what I was thinking. You know, that b- b- back of the neck to shoulders. Constant for constitution, it's probably going to be like shoulders mm. and chest, you know. Uh, um, I wonder if you can make. And you're getting charisma. <laughs> um, back tattoo. Really, it's your choice. It's a face tattoo? Face tattoo. <laughs> You can if you want to. What, what are the options? Uh, for for charisma, I mean, it, it could be like either it be looks or so. It can be something that kind of like frames the face in a beautiful way. Um, 
it could be less less like like like, like like a visual ink tattoo and more like you know the, the, those invisible minor body for, body modifications that are more like Just skin color designs and stuff you can put in. Right here. Um, Christmas is a little more amorphous because it's not actually a location based thing; it's more personality. So that, that's a little more is interpretive. The, is associated with charisma. Charisma is aquamarine dust. Ooh, that'll be so pretty with your skin, not my ugly skin. Yes, it would be very pretty. I wonder if if when you change. Oh, back, yeah. if you, the tattoo will stay. I don't know. Shit. I guess there's only one way to find out. I bet Caleb can make it happen. You're so smart. Yes. She and I will work together. All right. Did you find all your gems yet? Yeah, we yeah, did. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll say, you know, you guys round them up. Asking around, it takes, you know, say an hour and a half, two hours, so you're in kind of the early to mid-afternoon now. Um, by the time you acquire the gems you require and have them ground up based on the specifications that were really last left to you. And by the time you've come to this point, you wait about 25, 30 minutes or so for the ship to turn around and make its way back to port as it comes in, the bell rings, the ropes come off, the crew come over the side of the ship and you know moor to the dock and begin to wave to you faces you haven't seen in a while. Some new faces, some old ones from when you made your journey through the Lucidian Ocean and the Menagerie Coast to and from Darktoe. Um, and there you see, kind of coming off the edge of the ship, the uh, large, kind of gnarled, hard shell of Orly, eye patch adorned, smiling from beneath the turtle grin, kind of lumbers over to each of you. And as the he steps off the ship, he grabs the edge of his uh, his bagpipes type scenario <laughs> and gives kind of a whee sound that kind of is is the decree of the the ship's arrival to dock that they've become used to here in Nicodranas. Um, as it really approaches and kind of uh, goes up to you first, Captain Test Tooth, and goes, Oh, shit. Hey there, been too long. Yes, it's <laughs> lovely to see kind you all. Clasps your hand. So, how goes the majority of your adventures? They've been thrilling. We've uh, learned, we've seen, and we've, we've grown. How, how fares the ball eater? Are uh, terribly. You've been doing business all up and down the menagerie coast. Got all sorts of money for you. Oh, really? It gives like a big whistle, and they bring a small chest off the edge and drop it down. Whoa. Um Which, uh, <laughs> delivering to you guys oh, no. um, what now accounts for. 1,312 gold pieces Whoa! has been Do your split the of the money they've made since you last left yeah. them. Yes. Did you guys take out your money for your gem I, dust? I just did, yeah. It was 2,200? 2, 2, 2, I thought 2,500 was for diamonds. 22 2, for Yeah, you guys took 22. Uh, wartime 218 makes for very nice to each profits. Person. Uh, all of them. We'll take 150 gold out of that pile and leave it for Orly, Good call. yes? Oh. Yes. yes. Oh, shit. Don't wait for that map. Once. Oh, no, me, Captain. That is your split. We've already been paid for oh, the okay. money that was Two hundred and eighty. Made. <laughs> are we gonna tip? Are we gonna tip my neck? Uh, Orly, we have to get some uh, some ink. <laughs> I was wondering when you all be coming around to get yourself some mighty fine ink. Let me get my mm, mm, materials. And he goes back onto the ship and eventually sets up on the deck of the ball eater a table, uh, what looks to be some sort of a strange, like it's, it's half an alchemical contraption and part of it is some strange kind of tinkered mechanism. Um, and at the end of it, you can see what looks to be a sort of needle element that kind of rotates in a gear, and then uh, as you can so wind it up almost like a like a loom, uh, it begins to rather rapidly. Orly, can we ask, how painful is this procedure? <laughs> Quite. When was the last time you did one of these tattoos? Is it a common thing? This one, quite a while. <laughs> Regular, maybe a week. And he points over to one of the other a deckhands who looks young, fresh-faced, one you haven't met yet, who kind of waves over and goes, 
and you can see like on his arm, there's still a fresh kind of red, somewhat swollen tattoo on is the arm. Infected? Is that infected? Mm-mm. He's what? just. Um, Pansy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I totally want to stick around for this. I, I may go get some fish and chips. <laughs> I'll see you in what? Uh, call it two and a half hours. Well, hours. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. I will join you. I'll take some chips. Ah, oh, they're not gonna stay and watch us get that. No, no, we don't. Oh, that is girl time. Girl, girl, girl time. time. Girl time. Girl time. Get out. I, I belly whack not. Woo. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Make a dexterity check. <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely lethal. <laughs> 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 Arm bone ah! breaks between two abs. Abs of death, yeah. <laughs> Drop to zero at once. Oh, yeah. can, can we, in addition to the fancy tattoos, can we get just oh, a little nice. regular tattoo to just commemorate the day? Yeah, if you'd like to. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, easy yeah, enough yeah, to do. That's good. Okay, cool. <gasps> All right. Well, I was going to say maybe like an exploding keg of gunpowder. Of pretty that, cool. That's pretty yeah, cool. I know, that's what I was going to say, that's yeah. stupid. Not against chaos. Just chaos. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty good. CC. CC. Yeah. 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 Maybe they can be like interlocking, oh. like a chain, because we're fighting no. a chain oblivion. Oh. But then, like with a broken chain. But broken, because yeah. we're going to break, break the chain. Break the chain. I like Fish it. and chips, huh? Yes, yeah. I'll, I'll, go, I'll go first. <laughs> Lots of the brown right. sauce. I'll oh, take a vinegar. swig to yeah, numb, yeah. numb the pain. Does he have to roll a performance gonna, check? Is this going to work? <laughs> uh, so you were taking, you're getting a charisma. <laughs> yeah. Correct. So you roll take the uh, the crushed aquamarine dust. Yeah, I'm going to do um, like, well, I would request like eyeliner, like permanent eyeliner. <laughs> wow. um, and that maybe like sort of Swirls off and kind of swirls up oh, here. Shit. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I tattooed during that. So, yeah, that, it's it's almost like a, like a Mardi Gras mask, but it's just your face mm-hmm. in some way. That's cool. Oh. All right. So uh, as I just kind of what it goes like. Mm-hmm. There I can do. <laughs> Takes the dust and it's you see like so dri- places it in the top of the small oh. device. It kind of goes into this like glass funnel and it begins to wind it up with this large turtle foot. And as it does, you can hear the grinding sound. Sticking at the goblin mouth. I'm gonna try to learn what he's doing. I'm like watching everything. Okay. Um, Make make a perception check and an intelligence check back to back for me. Uh, perception first. Perception. Oh come on! Mm. My perception was shit. It was eight, but my intelligence yeah. was sixteen. Okay. Uh, you can you begin to comprehend kind of elements of the the enchantment the top, process. Yeah. You watch the device is one half of it, Which one? but the other half is as he takes the uh, the extension to the strange. Uh, kind of tinkered gear-like device where the needle seems to stem from, and the the, the small kind of tube that draws the tube that draws into it uh, that blends with the ink. Uh, there's an element to uh, to what Orly's kind of muttering under his breath. There's a perpetual, almost like a like a chant okay. that he does. He said that, he would apprentice me a long time ago. He probably had, doesn't remember, <laughs> and he's focused on the job at hand. Okay. And then, and while you pick up elements of it, you. You have a hard time focusing. There's so many things going on that as he begins to deliver the tattoo, to not, uh, you don't quite grasp the intricacies of it. It's fucking crazy. Um, but uh, describe uh, uh, how well you handle it. I guess make Constitution saving throw for me. Sure. Uh, I'm drinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, constitution save. Mm-hmm. Uh, nine. Nine. <laughs> you passed out part way through. <laughs> <laughs> You drink, oh, drink, hold on, and then just go limp. It's just like, ah! The three of your guys' tattoos will lead into the evening, so each tattoo is going to take a number of hours to go through. They're not extremely elaborate, but it's a lot of ground to cover, or the, the intricacy, especially with a face-based tattoo, it takes a lot of care. Um, so pushing in towards the, uh, at this point, the, a little puffy? <laughs> the early onset of dusk seems to be with, probably to start hitting about an hour in the next half hour or so, you come to consciousness in the chair on the edge of the ship. You wake up to the immediate smell of like ocean spray and and salt in the air and brine, and you kind of glance over and see this big smiling turtle face with the one eye patch go. Mm. Some of my best work. Oh. 
Mm. Sits up and you can feel already the puffiness. And you guys all look at Nott, and Nott is a little swollen. Oh! In the face. What? Is it okay? It's fine. <laughs> it's really shimmery. It looks really good. Yeah. I can you've barely a, see. You've got a nice glow. Yeah, it's like natural highlight, though. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to go to sleep now. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get ours done. Uh, all right. Casco! <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. With that completed, you get a permanent plus one bonus to your first. Yes! You to increase your ability Try score there. In, Who's up next? Yeah. You want to go or you want me to go? I can go next. Okay. Okay. All right. You walk up to Oilies. So, what might you be looking to put on your uh, canvas? Well, I'm using diamond dust. Here you go. Places it back up into the glass vat. It all begins to sift into the machine. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could make it look like um, almost like a small cape, you know, like the one that I used to wear? Mm. The little short one, like covering my shoulders and my chest. And then right here, I want two hands like this in the front, like the traveler is hugging me. That I can do. At least the wind of the machine, you can hear the grinding sound within. Uh, yeah, you know, hands are really hard. So this through. So as you. Totally uh, super talented. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. I guess it just. Uh, am I getting naked in front of Orly? You don't have to get. I mean, uh, you're doing my tattoo in my chest. <laughs> or, Here. Orly kind of looks and goes. Mm, whatever makes you comfortable. <gasps> Here, just I take off my sash, tie this around you like a okay. little tube top. There you go. Okay. Yeah. And so you're there, and. Uh, Is that right? Okay. So as as you you know take off into the armor and the outfit and tie the two top around, you can now see you know if you guys are there, Jester, like as 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 cute as she is and as as billowing as her outfit is, having her just there with the tube top on, especially kind of in a bow esque type outfit, Jersey fucking Shore. ripped. Mm. <laughs> Jersey Shore. Um, I try to make business. it not seem like I'm checking her out. Okay. Orly goes to work, and uh, it takes about three hours to complete the process. Um, go ahead and make Constitution saving throw for me. Do I add my, mod, my new modifier? You do not. Man. No. Do you want to like raise your hand? You know, You're like, like. I got this, I got this, I got this. <laughs> and just go limp again. Oh, <laughs> or, Orly, Orly, Orly kind of ca catches Jester in the small of the back and looks over towards you and goes, and goes right back to work. And um, uh, it takes a little longer because he's now dealing with a, a, a ragdoll. Okay, I'll try um, and lift her hat up occasionally. Okay. Right but the, buzz, so what you want the sun has set, the night has come. As you come to consciousness, you can see the stars in the sky, a moon slowly coming up over the sea-based horizon, and uh, a kind of slight tinge of just ever-present pain across your torso. Ow! But you look down, it's a beautiful design. Hey. Specifically what you asked for. Awesome. And you get a permanent plus one to your constitution. Oh, oh, that's huge. Yeah, you the last one. I am. You still up for it? You've been, you know, doing a lot of work. You're not gonna like trip I've been the fucking fence for like Many months. Last to get the fingers m moving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. See that? I, uh. Even which dust? This is the. The jade dust. The jade dust. Jade dust. Places in the machine. Winds it up. What kind of tattoo do you want? I pull out Molly's tarot cards. And I flip through the tarot cards until I find the design of the all seeing eye. Mm. Okay. Because he had that on the back of his neck. Yes, he did. Okay. Right below. And then I point out the other filigree on the card and tell him to just get it, embellish okay. it out. That I can do for you. And so now you're turned on the other way on the chair. You're supposed to everyone else has been kind of sitting in the front of it. You're actually with your chest against the back of the chair, leaning forward. Um, Why is Bo entirely naked? <laughs> <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. Um, Straddling a chair. She's just doing backwards. a downward dog in the middle of the wall. Maybe, maybe, maybe dessert. Shall we get dessert? We'll be back. We'll get fun buns. We'll be going to show you. Fun okay. Fun okay. okay. Constitution saving throw for me. Be the one. You got it. You be got this. One. You got this. It's you. 
You rolled a one. I didn't say three. Okay. You got a three as well. Six. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of bitches. <laughs> at first, <laughs> at first it feels like a tickle. You're like, oh, that's not too bad. You got this good. You got and then this. it turns into a burning, and then it starts hitting the, the 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 nape of the neck where it hits the base of the skull, and actually tapping on like the bone a bit, Whoa. and the pain begins to suddenly blackness, void, darkness, unconsciousness. Just yeah, the tunnel vision. Um, you wake up. Uh, it's Fuck. now a few hours into the night. It's not quite midnight, but it's definitely like later in the evening. It's like ten thirty or so, uh, or ten o'clock at least. Um, you come to consciousness, and you can feel kind of the pain in the back of your neck. Um, I didn't pass out. It looks so good. No, you were awake the whole time. It looks so good. Does it? I can't see anything. <laughs> I think it looks good. Is that Bo? It's really swollen. Do not point in the other direction. Looking towards the star. Or, staring at Orly, Orly just kind of spins, not around, back towards Bo. Regard. Um, finished, and it, it's a little sore, but. Um, you know, Orly goes and takes a hand, uh, hand mirror that they had on the below deck, pulls it over, and kind of shows you a little bit from best you can see from behind, over this way, and from what you can see out of the corner of your eye, it looks gorgeous. It's a beautiful interpretation of the all-seeing eye. The filigree kind of wraps around it, and then comes out of each corner, and then wraps up over, and then kind of across the shoulder there, Sick. kind of comes to a curl at the top of the deltoid, mm -hmm. uh, and the very point you can see the filigree actually comes up. You can see he had to kind of cut and shave a little bit of the hair yeah. up the back, but the filigree actually spills up the back of the skull and stops Ooh. at the at the crown. Oh, that's oh. fucking dope! What taps into my spinal column? Yeah. That's cool. So, you get a plus one permanently to your wisdom. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Uh, but the evening is here. The rest of you have come back greasy fingered, finishing whoa, whoa, your fish and whoa, chips. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I want to role play fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> It All up. right. I rolled for vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> they were out. Yeah. <laughs> and Is there anything the three of you would like to accomplish while they're getting their tattoos? I'm talk. All right. <laughs> you do have a number of hours to converse, so. Yeah. Halfway through the mail, yeah. <laughs> In the distance, you just hear. <laughs> <laughs> Well. <laughs> <laughs> Whose was this, by the way? That's Halas. That's yeah, I, I it's Halas. It was it mine. I started oh, yeah. role playing. It's yours now. There you go. I don't roll with it because it's big, comically huge. large. <laughs> yeah. What are you talking about? Big ones are fun. <laughs> so sorry. Back to you guys. Yeah. You finish your your greasy fish and chips here. The um. I really wish the, I had fish and chips right now. Yeah. This one's really good. Based on really I know. Good, based on the, the journey, the tension, everything that that's come your way. Uh, it is strangely comforting having a moment of quiet to breathe along the shoreline, an ocean that you only became familiar with for the first time, you know, about months ago. And as you guys finish your meal, you have a moment of quiet to kind of look amongst yourselves. Can I ask you a question, and, and you as well? Sure. Hmm. I'm not a man of faith like the two of you. I, I know that there are gods on high who look down upon us and interact with the mortal coil from time to time. But in my life, I have only ever felt like an ant finding my way about in the mud. Certainly, no feeling of fate, no connection to that. But everything that is happening with this group of nine continues to build. We are so different, all of us. Seemingly so little alike, and yet, for the 
first time in my life, I can't shake the feeling that we have been pulled together. And that is a very foreign thought to me. I knew that you had a destiny from the moment I met you. It's in everything you do. You are particular. I don't feel that. Well, it's a matter of perspective, I suppose. You were always moving towards something since you since you've been who you are. You're moving towards something, right? I have been. Well, it's kind of how, how do I put this? So, have you ever, uh, have you ever planted a tree before? Or a, or a plant, have you ever planted anything? Put anything in the ground. A long time ago, we had plants. Yeah. What did you? What did you? What did you plant? Um, green beans. Green beans. Perfect. So you put something in the ground. Didn't look like much. You knew what you were going to get at the end of it. You put this thing in the ground, and it's going to do what it's going to do. It doesn't know what it is. It doesn't know its purpose, but it's moving to green beans. The gods plant us. They plant their will and their desire, and we move towards the fruit that we will eventually bear for them, if all goes well. That plant may not have made it. That plant may have fallen to a chill or circumstance, been eaten by something that didn't appreciate what put it there. But destiny has planted you here and now, and it hopes that you will bear its fruit. That's destiny. Don't look at me, I'm learning. <clears throat> the tree doesn't know what it's going to fruit. You don't know where you're headed, but you were put here, and I've always known this, but I will admit I've never felt it as truly as I have since meeting the rest of you. This is, this is, this is a garden. This is a good garden. A lot of manure. <laughs> but a good garden. And what is the point of a chip if not just to douse it in vinegar? It's really the only point of this. It's bland otherwise. It's true, yeah. I mean, that's not the purpose. Does that, uh, does that help, Caleb? Or at least it's worth pondering. What about you? Are you ready to go chasing after Faris Doom? <laughs> That's a real sentence that I just said out loud. You did. You did. I am not ready for that. I admit I haven't been ready for any of this. We've just sort of been falling forward, one foot catching our momentum after the other. It's actually quite nice sitting like this. I can't really imagine what life would be like if we weren't trying to unravel this incredible mystery. I'm sure calm will come again one day, but until then, listening to my friends, we've been given an incredible opportunity to affect change. Maybe change the course of some things. I don't know if we'll do it. I don't even know how to start. Start by helping a friend. A very large part of me still feels that this is all stupid, that I should run away and stick my head in the sand. This is not for us, for me. This is our death. Now you are the smart one. You're also not wrong. But 
I have started to forget what it was like to not be with you people. And we are missing one, and I am stuck on that, that we are missing one. It's good to know your goal, to really know it. It'll help you. I think the other part of it is if you know everything that we know, and you have a choice, do you choose not to act and sit by idly, letting the rest of your life go by? Or do you act knowing full well that you might fail entirely? Yeah. Well, I'm at least familiar with the concept of failure. I think I'm becoming comfortable with the idea of failing with you. Makes it a little less lonely. Mm. <laughs> you two are all right. Getting better. You are as well. You should give yourself more credit. Mm. I know. Just think about it. I saw how hard it was for you in there. In the, in the ball. You put others before yourself over and over again in there. That wasn't easy. It was very impressive. What's our next move? <laughs> going, going. Going to Sadash maybe is what we will do, but it is complicated for me for to go to Sadash to speak to this man. I don't know that I can do that. I'm not saying that we don't, but I don't know that I can do that. We're going to have to protect you while we're there. And I think we'll also need to listen to what it is you want to do in case we run across any of the unsavory types we've met previously. Specifically the ones that have it out for you and we're going to have to get out as cleanly and quickly as possible. Or, <clears throat> what do you want to do? Hmm. Do you want to run, or find some absolution? If we go there, I want to find any information from Haas. And leave. I don't need to um, get my feet wet in that. We have a friend who needs us, and we have something bigger, bigger than anything, apparently, to deal with, so. First, we save our friend. First we save our friend. Everything else will come. Agreed. I hate tattoos. <laughs> ah! <laughs> yep, yep. Just not for me. Yeah. They're frowned upon in my family, so. <laughs> we pound our pints, here we go. All right. <laughs> Gages. You eventually catch up with the uh, the ship at the dock as the the three ladies come back a little bruised but happy with the art that has been placed upon their canvas. What the fuck? We brought fish and oh my god! Wow! Wrong with your face? She's a little swollen right now. It'll go down. Oh, but that's but don't look at the swell. Look at the, look at the design. Who's talking? What happened? Oh. It's Do I look pretty? Beautiful. Do you want some chips? We brought. Fish and chips. I'm not. I start them. inserting them in the <laughs> mouth <laughs> carefully. Ah, some quick, very show sharp us teeth. your other. Show us the other ones besides the horror on Knot's face. Don't just don't touch me. Oh shit! You wow. got haircut at the same time. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh you oh, piece oh, of fucking. You don't touch me. I much more. Roll an attack roll. <laughs> With advantage because he wasn't expecting it. <laughs> a one. Oh, that's a one. Oh, so 21. Roll damage. Oh. Think how hard you want to hit. It's up to you. 
full force. Full force. I said fish and chips. Bring it. <laughs> no, I'm doing my D1. Stunning strike. Or D4. I'm doing a D4. Yeah. Stunning strike. It's still eight damage, but. Sentinel. Where are you hitting it? Strack <laughs> aspects. Just in like the shoulder. Come on. You go no. unexpected and not tensing for any sort of battle scenario. Bo turns around and clocks you in the shoulder. You fall into your hip and <laughs> skid across oh, no. for about three or four feet. That ah, shit's gonna hurt in the morning. Oh. I fall and I'm like, <laughs> good, good one. <laughs> I honestly didn't mean to hit you that hard. I feel a little bad. No, I didn't. That did okay. hurt a lot. You just got me out of Just stay down, just stay I'll down. I'll stay here. Justin, what'd you get? <laughs> oh, well, I'm what still in my tube top. I'm just like wearing a sash because I can't put my clothes on over just yet. You are fucking jacked. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right? It's kind of ridiculous. I mean, that's, I've that's... seen her in like hot tubs and stuff, but like, I think that it really just highlights it. Well, it kind of shimmers on this, I know. you know, so it I've noticed. makes it show. It looks good. Thank you. Yep. And we also got these awesome Chaos Crew Thank tattoos! You. Look at that! Oh, I got the you were just there, it's right there. there! Yeah, we just okay. decided. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> 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 but I try, I try, I try to dodge it on the second one. Oh, I just do all that one. All right. I guess can we sleep on the can we sleep on the boat tonight, Orly, oh, we... and then tomorrow away, or should we go to your house? Get it away. Of course, it's your ship. Apologize. We got rooms down below for all y'all to be sleeping. Apologize for putting you a day behind. Hey, but I, and I'm happy to be seeing all you. Appreciate it. Uh, any any news to be shared from the open sea? Anything we should know about? Uh, anything from what was the name of the pirate island? Dark Toe. Dark Toe. Dark Toe. Dark Toe. Dark Toe. What was the name of the pirate captain guy? The Dark, Dark Toe. The pirate uh, king. The plank king. king. The plank king. king. Uh, far as I know, I ain't be here in two months from that island. But uh, uh, the pirates be out and about. Wartime be making money for all those moving up and down the coast. That means it's uh, extra gold for those who didn't attack the ship, so uh, pirates be around. Well, glad to hear you're keeping safe. If you happen to hear any reports of giant snake-like monsters covered in eyes, just be sure to let us know. Being set free on the seas. What? No, just you know, in the back of your head. Oh, right. well, uh, sleep well. I'll come get you in the m- m- morning. Thank you, Lee. So, you guys find your old places to sleep within the ship. Uh, well, nowhere near as nice as the Lavish Chateau, of course. Um, there is a weird comfort and a flood of nostalgic memories of your previous adventure here in the city and ocean. Um, Sleep comes readily to those of you who ate heavy food. Um, becomes a little more difficult for those who are undergoing now progressively heightening physical pain from the tattoos you received, but it does eventually come to you. In the morning, the swelling has subsided. Um, still a bit sensitive, but the tattoos are there and present. Their effects fully instated. Um, you can already hear the seagulls awakening, and the, in the the lower decks of the ship are already kind of beginning, to, at least near the uh, the edges of your chambers, the outside. The the heat is beginning to rise from the sun upon the exterior of the boat itself. Um, the morning is yours. Is there anything you guys want to do, by the way, before you slept? No, just picking my spells. Oh okay. yeah, I should do that too. I'm go. Oh my gosh, my hit points went up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah per level, one per level. Per level. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. Um, Is that not why you picked your Constitution? Well. You forget that you got all those nifty. Yeah, those little bonuses from Constitution. Um, I am going to not wear my under dress on top. Okay. I'm just going to wear my thing because I want to show off my mm. awesome arm tattoos. Mm. There's a lot They're of definition like, right? where your bicep meets your deltoid. It's. <laughs> shit. Yep. Like an A on the back of her arm. It's kind of incredible. <laughs> She's stacked. Okay. So, rest, rest is had. Caleb. Consciousness comes. The morning is yours. What would you like to do? Shall we? Get, shall we away? How do we do it? Yeah, we go to go by to boat or by teleport. Definitely uh, not by, by foot. boat. And where we walk. We're we're leaving straight away. 
Yeah, you, you're good? Yeah, I, I think, number one, I didn't tell my mom I was getting a tattoo beforehand, so mm. I just want to give it a little bit of time so I can hide it, you know, before sure. and give her yeah. some warning. Fair. Uh, is she weird about stuff like that? Well, never can tell. I mean, yeah. I never, you know. Right. Um. Discussions also, are brought up. Oh, so exactly. Just, you know. yeah. Are you going to visit home in a sweater from now on? Maybe. All right. I've seen people who find out their kids have tattoos literally at the funeral. It's the thing that happens. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Plus, you know, I it's think it makes her sad sometimes when we pop in and out so quickly and it we makes don't stay. Me very sad. So. Yes. All right. Then let's go. Back to the tower. Yeah, because you didn't even go see her. Well, we I know. It's painful to go in and see someone for three hours and leave. Okay. I don't know if you wanted to waste it. You guys make your way to the deck of the ball eater. Um, the crew are still out and about, kind of cruising on the shore as they aren't immediately heading out to sea. Um, as you gather around, Caleb takes his chalk and sets the ritual ahead, begins to draw the sigil on the wood deck that matches that of Zadash. Zadash, the Valley Archive of the Cobalt Soul. As you complete the final lines across the symbol, it glows for a moment. You can feel the faint hum and the vibration of the wood boards beneath your feet that signify that the spell is active. At that point, you all start running through, and right as Caleb being the last one to jump through, you look up right as uh, Orly comes up from below deck with a couple of platters and goes, Meat breakfast! Juice! Oh, <laughs> oh, so and that's where we'll take our break. Oh, hey. On your way back to Zadash, we will return and see what awaits you there when we return from our break. In the interim, we do have our Wormwood giveaway for the break! So, uh, this here is the Corrupted Collection Master Vault, available via the backer kit as their Kickstarter. For those who haven't seen it, it's this awesome oh. kind of turquoise werewolf with skull oh, design on the front of its larger Master Vault. This stuff is getting cooler and cooler. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, you can check it now via their backer kit or their Kickstarter that just finished uh, around Halloween. Um, but one of you guys gets to win this when we come back from the break. The keyword for tonight is chain. C H A I N chain. chain. Enter it once in the chat, more than once, you'll be disqualified. And once again, for the US and Canada only, excluding Quebec because of stupid laws. We'll be back here shortly with the winner. We'll see you in a minute. You got the perfect warlock, her weapons and supplies. But you need a place to track your stuff because you're so disorganized. You click open the web page. You heard about our critical role. Now you're ready to kick some butt in that mine shaft full of nose. It's TNT! What's up, all you beautiful people? Happy November from all of us here at Critical Role. Now, you may be asking yourself, Travis, why are you so excited that it's November? Well, that means it's the end of October, which means that it's the end of Halloween, and I don't have to worry about anyone else trying to jump out and scare me. I need a break from all that. But because it is November, we wanted to take this opportunity to announce that Critical Role is once again partnering with the amazing folks over at OSD. Now, if you guys don't know what OSD is, they are an amazing charity that supports military service members and their families, whether in active duty or in civilian life or even the transition in between, which is so important. Coming from a military family myself, I have been a fan of OSD for years. I've loved working with these guys, and we wanted to take a moment to congratulate them on officially supporting over a million plus service members and their families. Guys, a million, that is the kind of love we need in this world. These people put so much on the line every day for us. We want to give back in any way that we can. So all month long, charity push. The link is critroll.com slash OSD. Again, that is critroll.com slash OSD. Again, and as always, if you're not able to financially support, Spread the word, share the link, let people know, right? This is this is something that we want to do. We want to give back to these people that, that do so much for us every single day. 
Um, we hope we're a part of the next million for OSD. And as always, thank you for your support and generosity. Happy November, happy Thanksgiving. Bring on the non-spooky holidays. Love you guys. Last time on Talks Machina. Oh shit, are we, uh, are we on the internet, Danny? Jerry, the fuck? get Jerry. the hell out of my seat! You don't need you, Jerry, Danny's back. Oh, thank God. I'm back, motherfuckers. Danny. <laughs> Guess who's back? I'm, I feel like I should apologize for last week's episode. Did you have a chance, did you, did you have a chance to see it? Yeah, yeah I did, Brian. What the fuck? This is what happens when how you many, leave. How I, many questions did y'all get through? 15. Wow. People were saying that we got through like four questions. We got through more questions last week than we did than we normally do on the show. However, hmm. we goofed around a lot and it was quite fun. <laughs> Put the question counting. back up. There's so much there. I need it. I need it. Thank you. Um, there's so much here that I a lot is changing for him, or has changed and is still changing. Um, hmm. He's very reactive in a lot of ways. It's like whatever is laid out in front of him in the moment that, that matters to him, or that he can take advantage of, or that he cares about. I don't know, he's kind of, he's, he, what has just spilled out onto the table is gonna be like a real egg scramble for him, I think, because a f fucking betrayer god coming back is so much more uh, important than his bullshit. And I, and, I, and I don't know that it's gonna make him l let go of that stuff completely or at all, or just a little. But if, if the betrayer god is trying to come back, a betrayer god is trying to come back and, and just shit on the world, like on existence, then all the stuff that he's been chasing really even for him and his like traumatized, fucked up person that he is, he he, he has to reevaluate. He has to, um, and I don't think he'll ever let go of it. And like someone who is an addict, who is like who still every once in a while has a weak day and is like, you know, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Fuck, you know, and slips. I don't think that's. I, I don't know that he's past it. Hold on, you're this character to me. And you don't have to comment on this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna flatter you for a second. But but to, to me, this character is a, a very interesting lesson in a clinic in self forgiveness, right? Mm, and the yeah. and the second part of that is because to me, I'm watching Caleb's journey, and I want him to become more powerful, and I want him to do all these things. But at the end of the day. I don't give a shit. I want him to forgive himself because at the end of the day, after all the creatures and after all the monsters and after all the stuff is done, it's not going to change his opinion of himself, right? And and the other thing is, is people is you can get addicted to grief mm -hmm. and stay in that in that space and choose to stay in that headspace, yes, right? Yes. And and we are watching what that does to a person and the internal and this is just. This is, shows how great of an actor he is and how great of a role player he is and how great of a character maker you are because you think you think in layers like this. And I think like those two themes with Caleb to me have, are the two that really stick out is the self-forgiveness and then being sort of having, having an attachment to the grief. And the reason why he has the attachment to the grief is because that's the only emotional thing that he can still have connected to, to the family. Is it's like mourning, staying in a consistent, sorry, I'm going fucking nuts on this shit. Dude, go I, it, no, go run. These are things that I've been thinking about for m months and months and months. And, and you know, I, I honestly, um, like I think the, the loose goal for this was to fit, to like, see what happens, and, and I don't know the answer. I legitimately don't know the answer. I don't have a spot in mind where I'm thinking I'm gonna try to stick the landing and get this perfect ending where he's completely absolved himself and has forgiven himself and, and is the best life that he could be and is the principal of Hogwarts or whatever. I have no idea, and, I, and, I'm, and it, it's kind of scary and, and, and thrilling, and what we love about this game is not knowing, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm really curious to see where, where he where he ends up. What I like too, let me say one more thing, is that you're not, 
you're not railroading your own character. And like in my in my sort of newly DM mind, you know, you think about people who just go like, nope, this is my guy. This is the story I've picked out for him. It's not going to change. You're letting what's happening and you're letting the other players and what they say to you affect you and change you and go, this guy is, he's, he's malleable to me. You know, I, love, I fucking love that, man. It's like, it's cool to see. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, and I had some ideas of what he would be like, and really the other players at the table have kind of went and it's, and it's also fun to get, you know, knocked around in different directions. Yeah, and that's kind of the beauty of role playing. We're, in, we're yeah. informing each other's characters. Yeah, absolutely. Just like people inform us and who we end up becoming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't know, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. I love it. Oh my goodness. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Such, such a mantis? Such a mantis. You're such a mantis. Uh, AKA at, uh, AKA MK Frisbee. Let's take a look. Oh! Yes. Yes. That's awesome! Yes! Yeah. I love the post effects on it too. Yeah. Uh, there have been a few uh, that they've put up recently. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. That's, That's not so a really. Badass. They also have a really good video of you doing the the, the, the well, wall of, that, of fire. Of, of that cosplayer doing yeah, yeah, wall yeah. of fire. Yes, and and so one cool. one critter is the cosplayer, and another critter did all the post effects. Mm-hmm. And you That's guys at Lieutenant underscore Jack. Nice. You guys AKA fucking killed Bane. it. Bane loved him in the movie with the. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's cosplay of the week. <laughs> say say you think the darkness is your ally. You think the darkness is your ally? Yes. <laughs> I've petted the good boy named Henry, bonded with him, ruffled his ears. You don't know Henry. I think we're, I think we're finally back to those being funny again. Like it took a while. It took a long while. Disagreed. That never went away for me. <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> Liam's is just so good. (laughs) It's just a cup. Last time on Yeehaw Game Ranch. Yeah, you're not Brian. What kind of black magic is this? Well, where's my friend? Where's that fucking cat? Tina! Tina! Oh, shut your yap, you giant walking thumb! <laughs> Uh, well, well, who who is that? It's me, your old adventuring friend, Minnesota Jones. Oh, hi, Minnesota Jones. How you been? Uh, Darling, you made it. <laughs> Wait, you you guys know each other? <laughs> of course, we know each other. Who doesn't know the greatest realm walker in all the game verse? Kind of famous. The wow. grand titan of Ove, yeah. the okay. mother of all critters. The mother. Miss Laura, give me the fucking harps, Bailey. <laughs> the mother of, yeah, of course, oh. of course. <laughs> Uh, I'm siphoning energy off the game soul that you've been charging, but it wasn't enough to port us all. <laughs> Looks like I only sent the thin-lipped freak through the astral tunnel. Your screams gave this baby a lot of juice last time, but now we need something stronger than fear. True love, you know, with with, with, with him or, or anyone you fancy. Not Whatever you, you need, Minnesota Jones. What? What are we, uh, what are we playing today? Cut you. Overcut too. This game is known for bringing people together in harmony. Oh, good. It's just what we need to get this baby cooking. Minnesota Jones just suggested that you should find love with maybe someone else. That's crazy. I'm gonna I'm a track him down. He needs, he needs to pay. Yeah, I need that glove. <laughs> Here, Did you have some seaweed. <laughs> Here. Have some rice, bitches. <laughs> I, there's, oh God, why are we so bad? I don't know, it's, it's hard. Three orders <laughs> failed, we only got four. <laughs> the three of the four were wrong. 
If we're this bad that's at like pretty bad. management, maybe that's pretty. Our poor child. Um. Hey, nothing's caught fire yet. Oh. It's burning! It's burning! It's burning! It's burning! Oh, this is great. Oh, your fucking oil is on fire. Well, <laughs> there's a fire extinguisher. Okay. <laughs> fire extinguisher. Oh God, your whole kitchen! I got it! I got it! Go We're into okay. the corner. Oh my God. Ah! You gotta throw. You gotta throw something in your mouth, but like do it from out here. On count of three. One, One. two, three. Did you get it? No. I did. Ready? One, two, three. three. Did you get it? No. <laughs> I did. Come on, let's do this. One, two, two, three. No! You finally got one? I did! I never yeah, got one! That's amazing! Maybe. I'm just First gonna supplies. wash some dishes. <laughs> I'm so sick of your shit! <laughs> Look, I, I'll, I'll take care of everything. Go, 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 go! And then I'll do this one. Yeah, put it up there. Order up! Order up! I got it! Oh my god! Oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> this is... This, this is, is where... Oh! oh! Damn it! <laughs> I, fuck! <laughs> I can't grab anything! I want to grab the damn fryer! <laughs> Shit! What? Fucking what are you doing? Bitch! Ding dong! <laughs> where... Where's the damn... Give me the turkey nuggets! Order up, order up, order up. Oh. <laughs> I'm coming! <laughs> hey, we reappeared! Oh! We reappeared! The gods uh -oh. are merciful! <laughs> this is fucking terrible. <laughs> Cheeto and carrot. Oh, and a carrot. A Cheeto and a carrot. <laughs> are they called carrots? Candy corn? What are these? Oh, they're Why corn. <laughs> Hey everyone, the insanely talented Will Friedle here. I'm excited to announce that I have a new late night talk show coming to the Critical Role YouTube channel on Wednesdays called Mini Primetime. It's brought to you by the same creators as that one show with the hippie kid with the bracelets, whatever that is. Anyway, my show, Mini Primetime, is a mini painting show for beginners and veterans alike where this handsome face teaches the Critical Role cast how to paint their own Mighty Nine Minis. We're gonna be focusing on specific techniques like fades, small detail work, taking your mini to the next level by adding to your base. So look for it soon on Critical Role's YouTube. Critical Role, what is that? What is even a Critical Role? Oh, that's right. That was the show with Cash. Subscribe, or don't subscribe. Hmm.
That's not a question. Well, it is nobler in the mind to ponder the pros and more pros of Twitch or Twitch Prime. Or to take hands and gift new subs to critters who find they can't afford them. To play. To sleep. No more. And by a sleep to say the cast and crew of Critical Role might find their naps around the hectic schedule of a live broadcast that we have brought for your consumption, both critter and fan alike. To play or sleep. No sleep, but just to stream. Aye, there's the rub. For with your subscription, what streams may come. Oh man, oh man, oh man, that is a fucking tagline. Is, do we got that? Oh, that is Twitch poetry. Mm. Oh, anyway, um, subscribe to Critical Role. Use Twitch Prime to subscribe. Gift some subscriptions. You, you got it. Hmm. Wrong soliloquy for the skull, but uh, that's fucking good.
welcome back. So, before we jump into, they're different movies. We're debating Hereditary versus Midsommar. Anyway, um, welcome back. We have our winner of our fantastic Wormwood giveaway. Congratulations to Mick Comiker. Mick Comiker, congratulations. Mick Comiker, we'll have this sent to you ASAP. Well done. All righty. Getting that done. Oh. <laughs> that was almost terrible. That was that so on brand. Really that was so on brand. I need it immediately. <laughs> That was so on brand. That was the anti monster uh, card throw. Few, that was we too we had to cut the feed, come back next week with an eye patch. <laughs> yeah. Um, First of all, are you, are you okay? I'm fine. No paper um, cut? Okay. Uh, not physically. <laughs> Emotionally? <laughs> deeply. Um, so bad. I can always oh count God. on the universe to humble me every waking moment of every day. Uh, oh. So. Mustache last week? Yeah. This week? Yeah. So. Last we left off. <laughs> you guys have all rushed into the center of the deck-built temporary <laughs> teleportation circle that Caleb had created on your ship. As you step through, the warm sea air and the sun coming down upon you is immediately replaced with the cold, shaded interior of the basement of the Valley Archive of the Cobalt Soul. There, waiting for you on the opposite side, because you gave them some heads up, you can see there is a standard cleric of Ayun there, flanked by Xenoth, Mark of Xenoth there, still looking bandaged and recovering. Far better than you last saw him, but is still kind of like wrapped and kind of leaning against the wall a bit. But as you all arrive, <laughs> one after the next, you Welcome and hello. Um, so you've you've arrived. We've we've met you here. Uh, how can we be of service to you? Well, I guess we're just kind of passing through at the moment, but we're gonna go visit a newfound friend at the halls of erudition. Of course, by all means. Um, by the way, I do apologize for how things have progressed. Your previous visit here. Um, yes, you should be the one <laughs> to apologize, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Dairon has returned and notified us of uh, what you've all managed to accomplish in recent months, and uh, looks over to the other monk, kind of like, oh, oh, and then goes and takes a small, you can see, like, looks to be a folded uh, package of some kind that's wrapped in twine, kind of in a cross. Pattern and steps forward and hands it to you. Says, These uh, raiments of the expositor oh. are yours. No. Oh yes, I was. Um, I was expecting these. Thank you. Mm. Um. Yes. I apologize. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I came through a bit in a hurry, very headstrong the last time, and um, could have probably explained the situation better. Well, I uh, appreciate your uh, candor and accept it. That shockwave hit Taldori. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, welcome to the Formal ranks of the Cobalt Soul, I should say. It's been a, a privilege to watch you ascend as you have. Um, I've notified Dairon of your arrival, and but before you head off to the hall, wherever else you're going, um, I, I believe they would like a word with you, if you don't mind. Just both? Well, all of you, if you, oh. if you wish to be so. Even uh, better. It, or if you want to, just go. Up to you. Cool, 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 cool. Yeah. <clears throat> it's your prerogative, but uh, they're upstairs. Come, come, uh, I'll lead you on. So, Yo. are we allowed to go to Porto Mali now, too, and the Rexenthron and stuff? Oh, all, stuff? all of that has been suspended and, and abolished. You, you have free reign of the archives. Oh. As it should be. Thank you, yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Are you, are you yes. going to go apologize Super some more? Because cool. that was awesome. <laughs> Those are sparing. I understand. Caduceus, you know. I apologize. Pick and choose my apologies. 
Thank you, Mike Freely. And I'm sorry, um, uh, Beauregard uh, and our access to the stacks has been reestablished as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, if there's any further research you would like to make, uh, that is at your disposal. Wunderbar. Well, it is within her disposal. Yeah, but you have she to can accompany report to you. me first. So just, you know, make sure you go through the proper chain of command, okay? I'm comfortable with that. Have our unlimited <laughs> drinking privileges been restored as well Not to uh, no, around the town? Mm -mm. Uh, that, th 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 no, th 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 that's not a thing. See to it. I cannot. That is not within my prerogative. It, <laughs> you would have to speak to to the high Richter or uh, uh, really anybody who's involved with the actual goings on with this city. We just, I predominantly deal with the archive itself. My apologies. Uh, all right. Not correct. Yes. Right. All right. I remember that. Very good. <clears throat> this way. Follow me. And he leads you up the stairs. Uh, uh, hurt. Yeah. From yeah. The from the attack. No but like, it's them? been a few weeks, I know, that's what I was thinking. Shake it off. Sure. Right. Come on, man. <laughs> What's up? Kidding, kidding. Right. I know, it was a slaughter. We'll kidding. ask him about it when we get upstairs. He was nearly killed. We'll ask torn him apart. about it when we yeah, get yeah. upstairs. Maybe we can help out. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah totally, I'm willing to Maybe. give him some healing, but I'm just surprised that nobody else has by now. I know, me too. I was like, oh, I don't like, you I think know, it was just far enough that it's like it. still, still, Shaking off. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. You guys, he looks like he's not like bleeding through or like covered in bandages, but he has like, you know, he's still holding himself in a sore way. Pokey, mm. poke. He's not an adventurer. He's not used to this type of hard lifestyle that you guys progressively throw yourselves into. Pokey. And band. <laughs> As you're led back into the main chamber of the archive, you uh, step out into the familiar marbled halls, the high libraries, uh, the, the the shelves swarming you from all sides, with the open windows and the like somewhat uh, kind of arching glass dome atop of you that has all sorts of stained glass uh, imagery and symbols kind of poured through it, along with like clear sunlight that seems to break through. It is a sunnier day uh, than Zadash, uh, you know, was last time you came through. Um, uh, there is your stepping into the main chamber, heading towards the uh, the entrance and or exit of the archive. You see their arms crossed in the familiar arrangements. Uh, you see Dairon as not in the dark elf guise of which you had been uh, dealing with her for quite some time in the Jorhas, but in her original uh, elven form. So, welcome. Glad to see you made it back. Glad to see you did as well, all of you. And uh, it was a bit of a mess for me to untangle when I arrived. <clears throat> you were not joking when you said you had left a bit of a, uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, stink? Stink works, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's all right, just be a little more careful now that you have some. Yeah. Uh, you know, authority yeah. around here. Others, younger ones, and those who come in like you once were as recruits will be looking up to you. That is a new responsibility you hold as well. Um. <laughs> I don't hold you as any major example, but just be aware, there will be other Beauregards that will come in here acting as you once did, <laughs> and then you'll have to show them the ropes. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I hear you. No one will get more detentions than you. You'll hold the record forever, it's okay. You have no idea. Okay. <clears throat> so, I've taken the information you last spoke about, and I've only told a few trusted individuals about this uh, supposed Kreen uh, uh, traitor, the one responsible for the this beacon being passed into the Empire. Uh, I am keeping it close to my chest for now, as uh, currently the the struggles seem to grow there with the recent attack on Hapaduk and the, for the time being, reclamation of the Ashgard garrison. We are awaiting some sort of retribution from the Kryn, or the next uh, use of this momentum further into Johasian territory from the king. 
I myself am so far removed from that and have only just arrived here not but a few days before. I'm still taking stock of what is going on and figuring out what is the best course of action. Do you want to tell Byron about it? Share stuff with Byron? I am thinking, possibly, of if I can pull some strings by passing much of the bureaucracy and requesting an audience. If not myself, uh, maybe a few of us with King Dwendal and his council to inform them of this screen plot with the beacon. Uh, internal corruption that we've been able to suss out <clears throat> here and there, in which case, if there's anything you've heard in that regard, please right. do let me know. Um, I'm just not entirely certain I can give it arranged. It may take weeks. Have we shared what we know possibly about King Dwendal and the audience he keeps? Well, I don't think so. Yeah. <clears throat> can you tell if we're being scried on right now? Mm. You mean Ooh. like invisible thing? Or? Yeah, isn't that like? You're right. I haven't looked in a while. I mean, uh, Dyron, please don't be alarmed. And I summon the broadsword. Yeah. Uh, and I will uh, cast see invisibility. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you go ahead and uh, cast the spell. Your eyes focus. You can see that kind of interesting, almost <clears throat> ultraviolet extra spectrum of light that overlays that which you grew up with and become accustomed to. Uh, kind of filters through the chamber. Make a perception check. Fifteen. Fifteen. You take a moment to scan. Nothing seems to catch your eye. Seem to be fine. <clears throat> Dyrin, a lot has happened since mm. last we spoke. We've gained a lot of new information. Please tell me. It seems a lot of our leads towards the devices that were opening portals towards the abyss. Right. And everything leaning towards the chained oblivion and the angel of irons is starting to culminate and come into focus. I don't know. I think it's still to be said. King Dwindle's knowledge or involvement in this entire situation. But it seems a plot for some sort of new rise of Therese Dune is imminent. There's no Angel of Ant. He was awesome. a guise. And we know that someone in King Dwendal's immediate vicinity is part of that plot. King Dwendal, and who is this? His name is Vince. Vince. New Thales. He's an annex to you know, you know Ludinance. Uh, I, I know of him, but he is, he is not of the, the council directly. He is of the, right, he's the assembly. The, uh, the, mm. yeah. He is the uh, associate, his assistant, if you will, to uh, uh, Ludinus uh, Dales. We just, we know that through scrying means with Jester's talents that uh, he's had some sort of association with King Dwindle. I mean, it mainly seems like some sort of war front approach with sending the mages out. But we scried on them and they were. It seems that there's a third party that is pushing both sides mm -hmm. towards each other. Where is he now? Do you know? Vince? No. Out, maybe. Hmm. You want to spy on Blondie? Should, should we? Should we? We mm -hmm. Well, we've got a. We've got another. Sorry, we have some old fish and chips that we've been eating. <laughs> just some chips. We, they're just we are here now. It might be pertinent to what we what we do. We do, do it now, or we have we have another meeting? Do we? When do we? Well, I suppose we have more than one scrying spell. Although, if you scry on someone once, when can you do it again? I mean, if we need to know where he is, let's find out. Yeah, let's try it. If <clears throat> let me make sure that I prepared it. Oh man, I did it. I did it. Table tonight. I didn't prepare scrying today. What? <laughs> you use it literally every day. Well, not on days I don't prepare it. <laughs> what did you prepare today? Are you prepared? It's to fight? all healing spells. What? 
purify food and drink. <laughs> oh my god. As a note, if a creature succeeds at saving throw, it cannot be scried on for 24 hours. Mm. If it fails at saving throw, you can keep. you can keep scrying until they succeed, essentially. Did you prefer? No. No, I prepared insect plague. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm into it. And modify. I have modified memory. Unleash your abilities. <laughs> Not the bees. Show oh, them what yes. you've got. And commune. I have commune. Ah, uh, commune. Yeah, that's that's a good one to have today. Well, perhaps we could um, <laughs> complete our current business here on Zadash mm. tomorrow. Sure. You'll sure. be better prepared. I could, you know, I could just ask the traveler if he knows where exactly. I mean, it's not an immediate present, I suppose. Yeah. No. Let's just go talk to our person. Okay. Well, if what you're saying is true, and this is somehow tied in with uh, Therizdun, that is definitely worrying. But we need more concrete evidence of this, though. Well, there's not enough of it, or to take it to the king. Well, we'll find some evidence then. Um, Alora Vaisoran is um, letting Taldore know. About it, because she was there when we found out. This goes as far as Talore. Well, yes, she's on the council or something. Do you happen to know any other members of the council of Talore, by the, by the I way? I have not traveled there, mm. unfortunately. It's unfortunate. Maybe King Duendo will know. Mm. Mm-hmm. In your meeting with King Duendo, could you ask him? <laughs> if it is pertinent, maybe? Okay. Just every other scene for an hour. <laughs> So far, we know two. Who do you we know? know two people. Oh, it there. seems this plot and all of its because connections it's span outside the continent of just our own. It's quite larger than we're able to fathom, actually. With each hole, with each opening, and from this realm to the abyss, the realms get weaker and closer together, the divide between them. It's like termite damage, you know? 100%. And then eventually a house will fall. Yep. Mm. You trip. crack the foundation, bad news. Hmm. Well, if there's anything you wish to look up or research here, the archive is at your disposal. Otherwise, gather your whatever allies you have and try and get what information you can before we move forward. I will. I will see if I can muster some sort of a audience, but I do not know how long it will take. Where are you staying? Where do you stay here? Here. Oh, okay. You have a chamber here now as well. Wait, I'm not in like a bunk? Like shoved in the corner of a wall no, anymore? You're an expositor, you have your own ways here. Oh shit, they give you furniture too? Uh, what do I got, what do I got? Show uh, me, show me. Is it our sweet bathroom? Our sweet bathroom? No, it's a monastery. You had a monk's bunk. That makes sense. <laughs> you get a pot. <laughs> I am not to show you this. Uh, Zenoth can take you on the journey. Yeah. I will all right, by the way. <clears throat> I'm all right. I'm. I'm thankful to have made it back in one piece, and um, strangely consolidating my uh, prejudice against the Queen. Yeah, you came in like real hot, like that first night that we talked about it. I was actually like planning on like eventually talking to you about it if it didn't improve, but you kind of, you know, you started coming around on your own. More or less, yes. This world is complicated, and it's easy to be blinded by hate and vengeance. Um, Not everything is as we have told, I suppose. So, uh, I apologize if I made you uncomfortable. Nah. It's hard to make me uncomfortable. Like, real hard. That's true. I think they do it enough for you, anyway. Bo! <laughs> Terrible. Uh, You're an expositor anyway. now. Uh, I have to fun. go and. S- oh. Just walk walk away. <laughs> On that note, I'm going to go ahead and see what connections I can make towards the uh, the crown. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Exits the archive. Zenoth leads you to your chamber, which is actually up on. The, there is a there are a series of spiral staircases that lead to different different levels than the main chamber, the archive. There is the, the third floor that goes to the back, in which you you do know you've walked around there before. But there is like this large loop. It's like a long semicircle hallway that kind of bends around the back, uh, about two and a half three stories up. And in there, there are multiple multiple chambers in there where a lot of the higher up uh, members of the archive exist. You are given a room that has a 
very nice bed. It's maybe, I'd say, a thousand square feet for a singular Whoa! chamber. The That's bed. a big uh, room! Uh, uh, it's window. <laughs> Uh, it's it's a very very nice chair, much better than the shitty bunk that you had known and trained in. I'm international bitches. The Can we all sleep here. <laughs> I go jump on the bed. <laughs> uh, you yeah, all you could, all could sleep here, but there is only one bed. Um, yeah. But it is a chamber at your disposal, you so you do not have to pay for a place to crash. If you want. <clears throat> um, hmm. So the furniture is minimal. It looks like they haven't finished furnishing it yet. You had only just recently been. Given your position and these things, so it's it's a relatively bland chamber. You may you don't know if more furniture or furnishing is coming, or if they're expecting you to helm that. But uh, it the chamber Maybe is you. Go shopping. Mm, jumping on the get bed. like a Murphy bed or something. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah. And then you could turn this into like a living room, totally. and then you could transport pull out situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you never told us what the big deal being an expositor is. <laughs> <laughs> jumping. I noticed. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I um. That's the most Ronan jump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I guess I didn't honestly know. What does your new outfit look like? <gasps> I pull it out. Um, similar to the previous raiments that you've worn, but they are uh, far more detailed. The uh, the elements in the front it has almost like a, a like a, a more. Formal and brocade version of like a Sub Zero type outfit. It has like kind of the the, the V that comes up over the shoulders, but it kind of curls over with this like beautiful. Um, uh, the word escapes me. The massive shoulder pads. Yeah, the the trim on the side. Yeah, the cuff that way. Oh, yeah, a little bit that curls off the side there, um, and it's just that goes over whatever else you're wearing. It's just kind of a, a symbol of your status, not it an comes entire up outfit. Your abs, though. I slip it on. Okay. It actually comes pretty low, and you can actually see the abs in the bottom tight, of the trunk. Tight, so. tight. <laughs> I'm very good now. I it's not too bulky, and it fits over the outfit you currently have. Take Plus off one. my blue belt. Okay. Your pants fall off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're very tight pants now. <laughs> Should I keep this? This was like the. It's like the starter colors, like the uniform. Yes, you should keep it. Yeah, it's important. It's important to know where you came from. Mm. Maybe you'll hand it off to someone else one day. So they can keep their pants up. Yeah. Belts are important. For God's I sake, pick your pants up off the floor. <laughs> so. Really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> you should, should tie a knot in that belt, though. Because you're done with it. Oh, That's what yeah. they do in karate, anyway. Is that what they do? Uh huh. Uh -huh. Karate. And I drape it over my bedpost. Sure. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. And take out the. It's like a gray, right? It's like a gray mm -hmm. belt. Wrap it around. Where'd you get a black belt? Well, I mean. It doesn't work like that. Either. Kind of hit. <laughs> That's it? This, this, There's no yeah. black Hi, Richter, here we come. It's, it's like. <laughs> One step at a time. Now, Taking now, over. Now it's like more of an identifier of what your role is in the monastery. Mm -hmm. So, like, the librarians have a different color and the expositors have a different color, but, like, the. You know. Cool. Well, yeah. Sorry. So, expositor, where are we off to next? <sighs> to the halls of erudition. Seems that way. Do we need to do any more research before we leave? I have a quick question for Caleb, actually, if you don't mind. Um, just because we are in your old territory, your old hood, if we should be so unfortunate as to come across any of those Trent Ickathon types, are there any identifying features, clothing, garb, things that we should watch out for, things that you might be able to know are them in a low key or hiding or stealth position? Well. Um, when I was training, we wore very, very simple, uh, poor garb. Um, but I don't think that would be the case now. You could try to keep an eye on maybe their arms if they are exposed, and if you see anything similar to this. I can't think else wise. I don't think that I should go with you. At, at all? Really? I did not study here. I studied in Rexentrum. 
which is where I'm from, outside of Rexentrum. But the assembly are a tightly knit group, and uh, despite Yusa's fondness for this gentleman, I have no assurances of his allegiance to the rest. <clears throat> And you think they would see through like a magical disguise or something? Oh, yes. Well, what if we used like a practical disguise? Or, and obviously we'll honor whatever your decision is, it might be useful to gauge his reaction to you, if that makes sense. I know that's a risk, but we'll learn a lot by having you in that room. But either way, either thought has merit. Caduceus does have an interesting point. What if he does not react and keeps his true feelings hidden? Well, then we were already in trouble. And we would be without one very powerful member of the group. Yeah. It would be a, a clear disadvantage. Caduceus is really good at reading people. Pretty good. And you're really good at talking to these mage types. Can you talk without an accent? You know, like a normal voice, like mine or something? Yeah, a normal voice. <laughs> what do you mean? I speak in a normal voice. No, but but not the, the, weird, the weird way that you talk. The normal way. What do you want me to talk like? Normal? Like you? you? Know, like not, or like me, something yeah. very normal. Yeah, normal. Like someone from Nicodranus. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, 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 like oh, no. Fort, he could do like your, your accent that you used to do. Why would I do that, though? So that they won't, uh, they won't know I it's you. I just don't feel as Smooth Jester, when I talk like. This is, do you see what? No. Fort. Way more obvious. This is yeah. awful. Wait, like, big problem. This is all, big this bad. Problem. Wait, wait. I want to hear. Do 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 Ford's old accent. Oh, I thought I had already stopped. <laughs> <laughs> wow, real. Ford, are you okay? <laughs> What's happening? I summon Bolzgura. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Bolzgura. It's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not good. Yeah. How are you leaving? <laughs> are you thinking of are you thinking of coming along? Four year old accent's or? very weird. <laughs> I had forgotten how weird that accent is. <laughs> oh wow. I can give you a disguise. Like uh, uh, like a I can dye your hair. <laughs> I could uh, like put some eyeliner on you. Either way. She could tattoo your face. I could tattoo your face. <laughs> Either way, what do you think? Coming or no? is fine, but it's worth says considering. No, to me, everything says no. All right. Okay. Well, why don't you um, stay outside? I can always message you if we can take your cat. He loves cats. Oh, and that's critters. right. We can take the cat. You we can, can take the read. cat. And things like sprinkle. And sprinkle. We could turn you into an animal. We can. Mm. And then. You could spy on him. What if we were like, oh my god, here's our little sprinkle and a chimpanzee. Cupcake. No, like, what if they were like friends? And it's two weasels, and then, you know, we go, oh, you like sprinkle so much? Here, take cupcake. And then he takes cupcake, and then you're with him, and then you can spy on him when he's in his bedroom. Or you can just go read, and we'll um. have a cat with us. You can pop in if you need. May I have permission to use the archives here, Expositor Lionette? Let me think about it. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's a fast review process. I had to think about it. My brain operates Ex very quickly. Expedited Expositor. I've got a bunch of them coming up right oh. now. That's really oh, good. Oh boy. <laughs> I've been working on it. No, I'm going to. Uh, <laughs> look up a few things. Okay. Is there right. anything specifically you guys need to research while you're here to look up? That is doing. Okay. Oh, specifically? I can, there's all those like books that I like. I was kind of rambling off of that. Like, I recommend him a few books that I know of first. Okay. Like, what are you looking for? You're looking for like based on the earlier questions that were brought up. Is there anything specific that you're looking for? 
Uh, like, well, like what holds him in the abyss? What his essence is? Where? Like where? Like where? Like <laughs> what, what are you looking at? Where did it out. happen? What it wants? What it seemed to want? What its motives were? How is there a way to find it? Okay. Where did what it get are, bound? What are the chains? How? Who yeah. did it? Well, make an investigation sure. check. Actually, is there a bathroom that I could use? Really quick, is there a bathroom here that I could use? They do have a number of chamber pots available. Yeah. Dungeons Drop and Dragons, there are no bathrooms. I excuse, <laughs> my, oh, that's I excuse myself quickly and cast Fortune's Favor onto myself okay. out of view of okay. anyone, and then return. You got it. Yeah. Uh, investigation check, you said? Correct. Guidance. I don't think we're there. Uh, oh, did we already leave? Okay. Well, you guys are, unless you've left, you're all in there. Okay. With me. Is there anything you guys want to look at, you can too. That's at uh, 25. 25. Okay. As far as the essence of Thurid's Dune, um, the, the scribes who got close enough to record what they believe the closest there is to its intent were driven mad, so it speaks a lot of endless growth devouring. It's not a god, it is a world. It speaks of it being endless, black, inky, filled with teeth and malice, laughter, hatred. It just goes into all these kind of esoteric descriptions of something that isn't a, like a form. Like all the other betrayer gods, all the other entities in the pantheon that have different interpretations of how they're depicted in artwork and tapestries and tomes. Uh, every single record of Thruzdun seems uh, amorphous and without physical manifestation, um, beyond just the actual symbol, which is these seven chains. Uh, and then the black swirling void amongst them, which is the kind of unified symbol that has long been been uh, held by those that openly worship or the ancient temples and such that were built to it. Um, as far as what the intent is, the best that it can be ascertained is to consume and destroy, to eventually to to bask over and devour all that is Exandria and beyond, and. And who knows for what purpose and what there is after that, if there is a plan after that. It is it is said that those who have come to truly understand never came back. Is there any record or, or theorizing uh, on how or why it was able to be? I know the, the, the bits that Beauregard has imparted to us, but how or why it was able to be overcome? Um, when it first arrived in the founding, what little bits of, of information were kept and, and guarded within Vasselheim spoke of it was never here. It began to spill through, drawn by either the, the, the arrival of the divine, the creation of life, the imbuing of magic into the world. Something drew it from wherever it came and it began to spill through. And while it was still incomplete in that transition, it was originally banished. Then, during the Calamity, something drew it out once more, unseated it from that, that banished plane, and began to spill through once more and grew, grew and grew. It was through the fast work and the unified power of a number of the prime deities that they were able to seal it away. And because you're all so high in your research, uh, it is said that there are numerous uh, shackles. Uh, Six in total that hold Thurid's Dune within the abyss. The locations of each shackle fane are closely guarded secrets within the highest clergy of the Dawn Father and Knowing Mentor. Oh, did you say fane or fane? Fane. 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 F A N E, which is like a, a place oh. of power, of worship, right. or like a, like a temple. Yeah. It is feared that the nature of Thurid's Dune, being not entirely like the other of the divinity, could shatter the divine gate itself if unleashed. And no one knows how few shackles must remain to keep it at bay. And this is what you pull together from bits and pieces of like scrolls that have been copied over from what is, like most of the things you read here are hand copied from what currently is guarded and held in Vasselheim, which is where most of the original remnants of that era's history are kept heavily under guard. 
I share it with Beauregard and with the rest of the group. Okay. But if everyone waited, that was the only thing that I was interested in researching here, so today. Did that take hours for him to do? Because if so, we would have left. I'd say yeah, it, it probably took a couple hours to piece all that information together and to find the right books. That's yeah. what I thought, it's that I would be here doing this yeah. while they went. So in the, in the meantime, what would you guys like to do? Yeah. We'd like to go to the Halls of Erudition. Yeah. Hall of Erudition. Before yes. we leave, though, I did want to get sleep with the sun. Sorry, I got a little jumbly on the timeline. It's all good. Is there anything that we should ask? Omit. Omit. Haas. Haas. Or Matas. Or Matas. Or Matas. Yeah. Um, um, you could try to subtly ask what the assembly is doing um, to ensure the safety of the Empire. Uh, what they are, what, what, you know, be subtle about it, but he, he is a headmaster, you know, he is not in the field so much. At least he wasn't, but. Uh, did you just ask Bo to be subtle? <laughs> yeah, I did. Well, fucking great at being subtle. She's getting really good at being subtle. Very okay. Thanks, producers. <clears throat> Thank you, Jester. Also, Ford is a very good talker, so you know, feel free to share that burden. Um, we are not all really good talkers, too. Very. Super, super good. Lots of talking, yes. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Good luck with your reading. To the hall. Check out Old Gods and Us. It's a great read. <laughs> we'll meet back up. Uh, Want to meet back <laughs> up? Uh, <laughs> shopping trip afterwards. <laughs> yeah, after. <laughs> meet, meet back it's up. It's very yeah. comprehensive. Great for you. Yeah, we'll yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. All right. Are you guys taking Frumpkin with you, or are you? I, we'd like to. I mean, oh, you yeah. can, but it's. Not going to do what you suggested because it'll be too. He'll be too far away, and yep. I'll be reading. Oh, okay. well, but a, an extra cuddly animal probably will go. Will he well. still just like act like a cat, or will he be like weird and like not like, moving? Yeah, broken. He'll, he'll do what I ask him to do. Um, four or four. Yeah, yeah. You guys not there. Be um, especially adorable, uh, especially to uh, us, and he looks like this. And I think of him, and then I hand him to you because you are like <laughs> sandpaper. <laughs> All right. Okay. You don't have cat hair on your new robe. Don't talk about cat hair. As we're walking over there, mm -hmm. can I pull for the side? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like just to the back of the group. Mm. Go, just walk forward. Okay. Yeah. So we're in Zadash. Yes. And the gentleman is here. Right. And um, you know, he could be my dad. Right. Yeah. Of so, um, I do want to go talk to him, but I, I know what we're doing is really important, and I don't want to like pull the group there. Do you think it's stupid of me to want to go while all this stuff is going on, or? No, no, of course not. I mean, this is, this is incredibly important to you, isn't it? Well, I mean, I never met my dad. That I, I mean, I did, I guess, but I didn't know that it was him, and I thought about him a lot when I was growing up, you know, so. It's I mean, a tremendous opportunity, Chester. You shouldn't just devalue it like that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And besides, didn't we say that we also thought maybe the gentleman, your dad, might know some things? Yeah, I mean, he might. Should 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 we all go as a group? You think? Yeah. Do you think everyone will want to do that? Uh, I think if you tell them how much it means to you, they will. I certainly do. Okay. But we don't have to go now. We'll go. We'll go after we talk to um, this guy. That we're talking to. But we've been here before. Let's make sure that we don't leave without doing that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. While they talk, I talk with Nut. Hmm. What do you think they're talking about? <laughs> Sexy stuff. You think? Yeah. Hmm. I think 
I'm a pretty good judge of this. Mm. I think Jester likes Ford. Yeah. And I think he likes her back. I'm curious. Maybe I should check in with Ford. It's been a bit. Yeah, definitely. You think she's confiding in him? I mean, she confides in everybody. <laughs> she just kind of <laughs> says it, whatever she wants to say all the time. <laughs> It's an interesting point. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Do you want to confide in me? Sure. I'll tell you a secret if you tell me one. Yeah. Deal. The flask has been empty this whole time. No, it's not true. I'm just fucking with you. That would be cool, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. I don't have much, much secrets that I haven't told you guys. Actually, it's okay. We'll we'll do this game later. Okay. Yeah. I'll think. You know what? Think about something. Oh, I'll and, think about something. And when you have something, come to me. Okay, I'll okay. think about something too. Okay. Yeah. Because like I, it's nothing. It was nothing good. And then I went to my bad place, which was I like immediately think of lies. No, I don't want to hear anything. Yeah. Oh God, am I confiding in you now? Why do I lie all the time? <laughs> what the fuck? Why was that my first thought? It was like, what can I say? It's not true. You thought your instinct was to lie to me, your friend? Well, no, it's just, it's not you. And I'm, I am getting, I'm, I'm actually getting a little better at it, fuck. God, we're in the fucking public. Okay, look, I'm getting better at it, but. At what? Just lying? No, just not like feeling like I have to be something I'm not. Being honest? Be honest. Being yourself? Yeah. Boy. I didn't this, this is hey, well, how did we me. get here? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you holy shit! Wow, I feel like I just had a breakthrough with you. <laughs> Oh, I have a heart palpitation. Wow. Don't promote. Can we can we make a therapy character class, by the way? I think like, we may have like, to. Like, oh this is like a, as a bard subclass. What just happened? I don't know. Why do I feel like I'm about to cry? I mean, let I'm it not going to cry. Let it out, no. girl. It's okay. Can I lean over to Justin and go? What do you think they're talking? About? <laughs> <laughs> What's everybody doing? <laughs> I was running a lot. What about everybody? <clears throat> God, my tattoo stings. Yeah, that's what it is. Fuck. It lets out all these toxins. It's true. Oh, they're coming. I'm, they're coming. All right. We'll talk later. Shut up. You guys have passed through the arches into the tri spires. The familiar. Like the caduceus is just in between guys. Just yep. watching all yep. the. <laughs> and hearing all of it because it is high so fucking perception. High five, everybody. Everybody's so unhealthy. <laughs> 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 He's also just hearing some random dude in a cell going like, I'm the worst monk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, buddy. They fucking rode through on horses and now everything's cool. It's like Superman, he can never turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> passive man, my passive Indeed. perception. So. It's 19, passive perception's 19. Passing through the familiar elements of the city, you enter the old Zadash Pious District where the Trispire is built upon, the familiar gardens of the aristocracy surrounding. You can already see the, uh, uh, the massive Gilded Willows neighborhood as it presents to you there. You can see the Silken Terrace, the Pillar Trove, the familiar uh, glean of the Direction of Chastity's Nook, where such fine books can be acquired. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's in the Pentamon. No, you guys are in the tri spires. I'm not trying to say anything. It's close to you. It's where we're going when we're done with it. Um, and there you see the halls of erudition. The beautiful bits of white and gray marbled, heavy stone towers, the walkways that kind of weave between them. Uh, you can see the beautiful exterior courtyards with trees and trimmed hedges and little cobblestone walkways. It's like this this beautifully elegant, you can see kind of loosely inspired by elvish design, uh, the way everything kind of connects and has an organic flow from one place to the next. 
you can see what looks to be a small uh, class of about ten students in uniforms, kind of like these, these uniform robes with a little bit of a, almost like a, like a fine tabard that's short and just below the belly that's hanging there, and they're all clutching their books with them, and they're being led through by some sort of a, a teacher that's giving them a lecture as they walk through the garden to the left. You head up the main heavy staircase that is about 20 feet wide and slowly tapers until it comes to the uh, the double doorway that greets you at the top. This beautiful arch that starts like a natural apex and then kind of curves up into this kind of uh, carved uh, ivory spiral on each side before the doors come beneath. And the doors themselves are cut in a similar shape, so as one of them is kind of uh, partially open and you can see there are two uh, they're, they're the crowns guard, but you see them dressed in similar attire as some of the students, kind of to signify the, the coloration of the halls here. Um, upon approach, they kind of give you all a look, and one of the guards glances down. Uh, could I inquire your business here? Ford. What? <clears throat> oh, yes. Um, uh, hello. Um, we've been sent here uh, on a mission to gather some, some knowledge. If you wouldn't mind showing us to. Um, the stacks. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> if you are seeking research, you are better luck with the uh, the archive. Uh, this is a place of learning. If you are not a student, I pull out the uh, the letter that um, Yusa gave us, and it's um. You say it's um. It's, um, <laughs> it's you know. We're, it's, we're, here, to we're see, here on behalf of. We're here to see someone. We're here on behalf Ormid of Yusa, Haas. the Head super master. headmaster Ormid Haas, okay. the Archmage of Cultivation. Perhaps you've heard of him. Both of you make persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little extra charisma to work Ooh, with. I'm, I'm gonna go. guide myself Ooh. beforehand. Natural twenty. Oh. Oh. Eleven for me. Okay, not terrible. Mm -hmm. uh, Rolled a 13. Between the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> between the two of you, the uh, uh, the soldier kind of looks at the paper, looks. I, I, I will inquire if he's available. I'll uh, wait here yeah, a moment. Heads inside. And uh, as the door opens up, you can see at the, the, the cut portion out of the door, it has this kind of nice little. Uh, Tapering top to it. That's very impressive. Yeah. Um, hmm. The front of them, very kind of just smooth, polished. Um, the, the details are more on the exterior of it. About 15 or so minutes pass of you tapping your feet on the ground before you hear footfalls begin to approach again. The other guard just kind of watching you quietly as you all wait outside. Um, until eventually the door once again opens, you hear it kind of scraping against the stone or the floor beneath it, and the guard arrives, the secondary guard, both flanking to each side. Ormid Haas, who you've seen once before, you see standing there, somewhat short, maybe like five foot six, um, but a stocky uh, humanoid man, appearing human, but the skin itself is a, a very dark, uh, brown with a unique texture to it. With each shift, like dust seems to almost fall from elements of the joints. The eyes are pitch black, Whoa. like awesome. tiny polished marbles of obsidian. Sick. Um, kind of steps out with similar robes to the other uh, instructors you've seen, though his are much more elaborate, and you can see there's these two long tassels that go over each shoulder that drag on the ground behind him. Uh, for an additional two feet, it, it, they, they stay clean for as much as they're like brought across the grounds behind them and the floor itself. Upon stepping out, arms still kind of crossed in these heavy, long sleeves that drape down almost past the knees. Um, looking over all of you, these uh, you know, short, dark, kinked hair, um, and this kind of bright smile, but a stern glare to the eyes that belittles a social presentation, but a very, very intense kind of probing look. Hello, you have made your way to the halls. You have requested my presence. I have but a few moments and would be quite curious as to what you... Uh... The corner of the mouth curls into a smile. <laughs> you saw you old fool. 
to have my attention. What has he tangled you lot up in? Yes. We would value some privacy for this conversation. Is there somewhere secure? Welcome to it. Follow me. Turns around <clears throat> and follows you. And you guys watch as, at, with each step, that kind of bit of, of dust that seems to kind of uh, drift off of the side of the neck as it turns, with each footfall, there's this like gentle little trail of almost like gravel or very, very fine powder, like a gray powder that's left in his wake that slowly just kind of vanishes a few feet after he passes in front of you, leaving no trail behind. Um, heading, heading into the main chamber, there. this is a beautiful, beautiful uh, open like foyer-type region of the entryway to the halls. You can see it's multiple archways with pillars all throughout that seem to give this kind of lattice-type pattern of archway after archway after archway, each leading to the next, to the point where everything is connected in this continuous, kind of beautiful, organic wave after wave-like visual spectrum. Uh, the sunlight that comes in from the side, tall windows, lights everything with this kind of warm sunlight hue, like, a, like an eggshell and a, and a soft yellow light. Um, this is awesome. You can hear the echoes of voices in distant halls, and you can see it splits into three different hallways immediately as you enter the chamber. Um, there is a circular desk of some kind in the center where a number of books and records are being kept for those that pass in and out, uh, students' arrivals, um, anything else. And as you guys approach, the, the person at the desk, uh, this kind of older woman, uh, looks to be a uh, halfling in, in uh, lineage, um, kind of perched up on the chair, lifts a quill to ask a question, or just puts a hand up and shakes the head, and she goes back to her chair. Or mid my calls. <laughs> <laughs> Leading you off to the right-hand hallway, uh, which is of this hallway, while it's maybe 20 foot from side to side, stands about 80 foot to its apex. Whoa. So the whole thing has this gradual arch to it. Um, beautiful. Uh, it's You can see why, you know, why this is considered a place of higher learning. And even just looking at this, you can only imagine what the Soltress Academy must look like. Um, about four or five doors down, you're led into a left-hand chamber, and there appears to be a warm meeting room. Uh, the coloration shifts from the, the the white and grays, that kind of you know marbled swirl that seems to be the, the bulk of the interior and exterior design of the halls, and instead it has a, a dark forest green color. Um, the wood itself is like a, a deep, dark mahogany, and you can see there's like a, an, oct an octangular table with chairs set up around. Ormid goes around to the opposite side and sits down, arms crossed, and kind of addresses for you all to sit down. By the way, before we got here, I probably would have disguised myself as something else, I assume, right? We're in Empire Lands now? You are. Yeah, but. You've gotten around before with your mask, but you, I don't have, you don't have your mask anymore, anymore so no. you probably oh. would have. Right. Yeah. I'll trust you to have the foresight on that, so. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll have made myself a halfling. You got it. All right, and so as you're onto the chamber. Mm. So, it is strange for uh, such a motley crew to be so heavily involved with uh, a, uh, I would say, oddball, as you say, <laughs> so far south. And then to be sent to me by name via missive is very uh, intriguing. Do tell me, what is your business? What, what, what has brought you to the halls? Well, user trusts you. <laughs> very well. And what we've been through is pretty bad. I can keep going. We worry, we, we worry for the fate of the Empire. I mean, yeah. And uh, are here to uh, tell you some information and see if you've heard, heard of anything uh, that, uh, that you could convey to us that would help us protect the Empire from impending doom. And, you know, the world. Well, yeah, that, that too. these things seem to align with my personal preferences, so yes, let us continue. Okay, so there was this um, group of people that were worshiping this angel of irons, right? And they took our friend, and she didn't want to go with them, but this guy was like super powerful. And then um, we were scrying on them, and we found out it wasn't the angel of irons at all. 
It was the chained oblivion, and he's trying to break into the world. Big. <laughs> big. It's a big drop. It's a, it's a, a big lore drop there. Uh, do you know what Ferris Dune is? I am well aware. Uh, you, you can see this look in the face of like, who the fuck are these people to walk into my house and tell me such ridiculous things? But then, like, you see, he glances down at the partially unrolled missive that still sits there and kind of looks over the signature. They seem to be making headway. Do we know where? When? Who's involved? Every, well. That's a bit of a larger story. It seems that there is a third party involved in bringing both the dynasty and the empire to blows as maybe a means of distraction or as a way to upset the order of things, but there have been devices planted on both continents to poke holes between here and the abyss. Creatures have escaped, we've removed or destroyed some of them, but we seem to have uncovered at least the intention to weaken the distance between the planes. I reach into my pouch and pull out the fragment of the homemade portal device, toss it at him. We believe there are agents on both sides of the war working towards possibly freeing this entity. Most of these were found in Johas, but we do believe someone from Johas allowed one of the dodecahedrons to be brought over to the Empire in an effort to upset balance. What is this dodecahedron you speak of? It is an item that the Jorhasians worship. It's a structure and a geometric shape. They treat it as a deity, a god. Where did you acquire this information? We spent some time in Jorhas. And that is where you learned that one of these Todekahedrins was taken? Yeah. We actually learned of it here in the Empire first. Is that a problem for you, Ormit? It's not a problem, it's just not a, not common knowledge. So you didn't know? I'm aware. You can see that we are obviously not the type to be um, privy to this level of information, and I think you know that by possessing that letter, we're obviously involved in something far above our pay grade. Yes, you are. And I would recommend you tell no one else that you know of this. Mm. Agreed. You are lucky you came to me first. Insight check. Yeah, I, can insight I was about to say. Both of you guys make an insight check. Why doesn't he want us? Well, yeah. yeah. Mm. I've been watching him like a hot just said time. three things anything. that could get us arrested Yo. here. Uh, 19. On. Oh, insight, on. hold on. 19. <laughs> 27. Ooh! 27. 20. Whispers! Dual whisper, you bring both your ears here so we can tickle at the same time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You rolled so much better than I did. What's in the shop right now, Laura? Mm. Is there a whisper part? That There's not. <laughs> this is. Oh. Oh, this lovely blanket that's been keeping my butt and back warm this whole night. It smells still like Sam butt. <laughs> Sam butt. A new and fragrance. Some comes. awesome pins. Check them out. They're chibi. <laughs> They're and chibi. They're chibi. For cute. What? Well, so Other funny. whispers? Double A double whispers? whisper? Have we ever done that before? Yeah. Why not just tell everyone? They're going to just tell everyone. Mm, it's, it's so funny. soft. No, it's so good. Oh. It is so soft. <sighs> I love it so much. Also, two seasons okay. of Legend two of Fox Pocket. 24 oh. episodes. Even more story. See it right. internationally. <laughs> Ormid, I know, as you said, we appear to be quite the motley crew, and you're not wrong. We're dope. <laughs> but that leniency has granted us the ability to infiltrate certain lines. Apparently, if you've been to Jorhas during this conflict, that says a lot about your capabilities. Now, there have been uh, rumors spreading for some time within the more private echelons of the Empire of uh, Imperial defectors working with the enemy. There has been, as far as I know, no identification. Would this perchance pertain to uh, the journeys you've made. 
Honestly, it's hard to say. We've found evidence of potential defectors on our path. I see you are an expositor. Yes, sir. I take it this was part of your uh, intended mission. Yes, sir. Well, what I do know is that whatever Whatever Ludenus is attempting to ascertain with this beacon is important. I do not know if I agree with the ramifications of this, nor can I speak to as this beacon being specifically the reasons for this conflict. I don't think the beacon is specifically the reasons for this conflict. There have been many, many things guiding this tension for quite some time. This was just the... Uh, Perfect excuse. Perhaps. Beyond the two rivaling factions between the Empire and Jorhas, and this potential incursion from the Abyss and the Resdune, the Resdune seems to have unified certain elements between devils and demons. I don't think you worrying about the conflict between these two mortal beings should be your main point of interest. So you are agreeing with me that this beacon and this cult are possibly unrelated? Yeah. All right, we're on the same page. If we were to able, uh, were able to expose um, as you called them, a defector among your midst, what would happen to that person? If there was uh, imperial members who were defected to Jorhas, they would be executed. Or well, what, what if they weren't defecting to Jorhas? What if they were just working with this strange third organization that's trying to? If there are cultists within our immediate midst, they would probably be given the same. They would be hunted by the uh, war struckers and uh, tortured and probably never seen again. May I ask a question that's insanely above my pay grade, and forgive me if it's insulting in any way. Have you considered at all that King Dwendal might somehow be knowledgeable of this? Of this cult activity? Yes, of this third party movement. If he's aware and is not involved, he would have voiced this. There is a lot of very direct communication between the Assembly and the Crown and the Council he keeps. If you are insinuating that Dwendal himself is part of this cult. Hmm. Again, no offense intended, merely. I would need evidence for that. Have you noticed anything different with him here lately? Reoccurring themes involving the chained oblivion, involve manipulation, Not starvation, so. hunger. Hunger. Is anyone on the service assembly like really hungry all the time? Or like aggressive all of a sudden, like all of a sudden? Like, or just like War and always conflict nauseous. brings aggression. Well, yeah. Though the members of the council and the king himself have been a little more uh, excitable towards conflict. Like who? Like Trent, maybe? What do you know of Trent? I don't know, just um, Yusuf was talking about some of the members and said that Trent was kind of creepy as well. He's a strange one, yes. But he is effective, and he has his place. We do know that there are people who cannot be trusted. Who? Well, to be fair, I'm not entirely sure we trust you yet. Then why are you here? So we want to trust you. Then trust me. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if this is the extent of what this conversation is going to be, I can carry no, it from no, here. No, please. However, if you're going to walk into my house, call me here at the, at the words of Yusa, and display this very tangled tale, I would want some 
definitive proof or direction of which I can be of assistance on. We would be happy to offer that. We just want to make sure that if the worst is true and if this is even more tangled than it even appears to be, that there's going to be no trouble if it's disturbing information. <laughs> we, uh, as the assembly, weighed deeply in disturbing information. That is how we keep it from spilling into the streets of our people. We keep them safe. We keep them blissfully ignorant of the dangers and the challenges of Xandria's darker and more shadowed pits. It can be hard when one is betrayed by someone they trust. Yes, and speaking of, if there is someone in, in your midst who is, is betraying you, you can't just go around investigating them, can you? Mm, no. I would need to begin to rally those I do trust within the assembly. I would look to carefully build a case, take it to the king, as well as the council. If we wanted to possibly assist you in that effort, how best could we go about doing it? Well. I can tell you that the Cobalt Soul is already assembling a case to take good. to King Dwindle. Who is assigned to this? Expositor Dairon. I know of this Expositor. I will reach out to them. Perhaps together we can cut through some of the usual red tape. Um, I will see what I can do. You mentioned that Ludinus was studying the, um, the beacon. Yeah, the beacon. Um, do you know what, to what means he's trying to? He believes that there is something uh, dangerous and unstudied, untapped, that the uh, the Kryn have been tampering with for as long as they have been developing their society. Magic's old and. Uh, slightly beyond the understanding of the existing school of self magic. Mm, interesting. Uh, I believe there is, as is the case with the assemblies, uh, one of our main concerns is assuring that any sort of errant or aberrant arcane pursuits are studied, understood, and contained before they can do damage. Utenus has been helming the research into this, both as a means of understanding it, to counteract it as it is being used quite heavily on the battlefield and as a means of infiltration and uh, assaults upon the Empire, and perhaps nullify it. Well, we happen to know that Ludinus's assistant, the blonde-haired guy. Vince? Yeah. He's kind of working in conjunction with the cultists. The lapdog? He yeah. was one of the cultists. Yeah, yeah he, he was helping with the, the rift thingies. In fact, that was. we found this fabric swatch, linked out to him. And that's, that's also how we where we found that. It's time. Like empire robes to us. This will suffice. I will begin my investigations. Are you gonna keep that? Whoa. I would have to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I okay, saw okay, him. Okay. He was yeah. writing in a book. It was a book that he kept with him. Where do you know where he is now? <laughs> I'll know tomorrow. Not in that spell. <laughs> But if you need us to check up and check up on him and get more information, please, like notify me. I'll send you a message. Is there any the minute I know anything? Is there anything you can give us to, that that would help us get closer to his his circle of uh, 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 of, of uh, assistants or employees or why are you? Yeah, you know, maybe we can. Maybe you can hire us as your assistant, or letter? one of us, and then we'll like hang out as assistants together. Let me. Do you have like assistant like break rooms? You see, he kind of closes his eyes. The uh, the dark uh, glare of his colorless 
uh, pupils vanishing, and you see a faint glow from behind the eyelids. Oh, and he speaks out loud. You recognize this as kind of a, a separate flair to the sending spell. Mm. Vens, <gasps> Headmaster Ormit. Um, I understand if you're still in town, they would like very much to uh, perhaps offer you a, a bit of a personal um, request, if you will. I, uh, I myself am quite busy and have some business. He gets extra vigilant checks on you. Uh, may I ask one other strange question while you wait for his response? Do you have like a little bowl of milk for our kitty cat? Oh, and <clears throat> immediately his face goes. And spring. <laughs> what didn't you say? What is this little one? What is? Oh my goodness me! <laughs> oh my god! Just immediately, like the entire, entire uh, presentery kind of intimidating visage just crumbles. Like, <laughs> what is your name? Like oh, the whole my time, Frumpkin has been so hidden, just like <laughs> one side of your lapel. Yeah, just and then like the head pokes out. Belt. Yeah. Oh, this is this is a. Are you all familiar? What about the um? Who is familiar? Is this? This is also oh, sprinkled. Familiar? I mean, he's just oh. a cat. Oh, oh, it's not, a, it's not a magical thing. Double presents. Oh, 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 oh. oh, this is, oh, the, this is. <laughs> I know this is, we are talking about very important things, but. Uh, the little things. Oh, oh, oh it's, oh, it's. Yeah, Sprinkle likes to cuddle in, in, yeah, so. And remember, I told Frumpkin to be extra Super adorable. adorable. And it's just cuddling on, you can see like, like oh. the, the, the shoulders go up. Oh. Kitty biscuits, all of it. Oh yeah, like on on the back. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. As this is happening, like like his reaction stops for a moment. Vince is not in the Dutch. He's in he's at Rexentrim on important business for Daleth. So we should also say main man agents agents of this. Angel of Irons is are uh, moving quickly towards something. Their plans obviously are to free the, this thing. What was it? <laughs> said, I know, I know. You are, look, if you are There's hungry, I'll get you. Here. All right. Bring, bring, some, bring some from the uh, the the the, the mess. Bring, bring some of the the, the small cubed meats, please. Thank you. Yeah. And the guard leaves for a bit. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what? Was, um, There's a. We do know that their plans are in motion, and any any leads that we could have on stopping them before they release this ancient void would be, of course, helpful. I, it's. I would be. Oh, Cats just. Okay. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is so, so, so tiny. We I know. I he's just the best, isn't this he? This is adorable. A bit gaunt, but uh, well, it's beautiful. Well, you know, yes. he's an adventurer, so he's alive. Yeah, you know, you've been around, haven't you? Oh, that's in three three like, sure, sure. It bites his finger, <laughs> but his finger's like hard and just kind of like. Oh, that he goes it. Oh, <laughs> I will. I will. I will go ahead and begin to reach out to my contacts. I. Um, Perhaps I may have to make a journey to Rexon through myself when the time comes, but I need to ensure that I don't have to raise any suspicion or do anything to uh, That's tip them off. That's why we could go for I, you. I'm, saying, I'm just saying, we could go for you if you, if you well, want. Well, of course, but we, I feel like we have different avenues we can pursue. I know, I know. <laughs> we have different avenues we can pursue simultaneously. <laughs> do, um, is there anything else you need? Man, I'm so distracted. I know, this is really, it's really cute. So cute. Um, yeah. I mean, this is, this is uh, pr productive, but we, we what did, are the other avenues that we can pursue right now? We did ask for something that would perhaps let us move with a bit more ease, right? Something, something perhaps a letter, or if it's more important for us not to be affiliated with you, if you want us to move with some autonomy, but independence. Make a persuasion check. Guidance. Okay. No, oh, casting a spell in a... Oh, is that bad? <laughs> Guidance isn't just like a, it's like a, in front of a. Oh, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, just because I don't. Um, uh, Twenty-one. Persuasion. Persuasion. Twenty-one. Yeah. 
reaches back into the inside of the robes and pulls out what looks to be a, uh, a pin of some kind. You can see the shape of it. It's these, it looks like this with a series of small spires in it, almost like, a, imagine like a, a curved comb with eight spires that all kind of slowly get smaller towards the center. And above it, you can see three diamonds that face each other. You recognize this as the symbol of the Cerberus Assembly. The three diamonds referring to the three heads of the Cerberus, and the eight being the candles of Rexentrin. Yeah, that's um, fucking crazy dope. Hands it to you. People says, fuck, but... Oh shit. Maybe, uh, maybe don't put it in the same pocket as the other one. <laughs> He goes ahead and like waves his hand, and you can see this like faint glow kind of solidify in the front of it, and a symbol kind of flashes for a second and then vanishes. I've marked that with my signature. Whoa. If any members of the assembly give you trouble, present that, and it should at least lend a bit credibility. But once again, even my influence limitations. Should you do anything untoward or uh, extreme, you are on your own. Not us. No, we're fine. No, we're very even killed. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the members of the assembly, in Rexentrum, if we make our way up there, are there any members that you, without a doubt, and all of your uh, experience points to trusting entirely and completely with your life. No. Wow. Wow, no. these are your coworkers. <laughs> that's that's a problem. You should have an HR department or something. Well, there is a, a spectrum of trustworthiness within also acknowledge the importance of what we do, the work that is necessary. It is for the good of society. In the future of the Empire, we are a series of checks and balances within our own group, and we, in turn, offer a check to the Crown. Just like the Cobalt Soul. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, makes sense, yeah, makes sense, yeah. And just for clarity, you want us to avoid using your name, if at all possible? If at all possible, yes. But understand, there are many enemies of the Empire in Alexandria, and many of these enemies rush towards the secrets and dangerous whispers that lie scattered throughout history and wish to use it against them. Part of our duty is to get to them first, to protect us. That requires uh, strange bedfellows at times. I think we understand that within our own mm-hmm. group. Well, beyond then, time is of the essence. One last thing. Do you happen to know any of the members of the Taldore Council? <laughs> <laughs> Not personally. Mm. Very well. I do have names. Just We're just curious, you know. What does this have to do? We try to keep up with like global politics. Global politics. We feel like it's important. You so yeah. knew Geopolitical Allura by Soren. Uh, we were just curious. I've heard of Allura, but I have not met her personally. Mm. You've just mm. heard of Allura? She's, really cool. she's, she's really cool. She's great. I don't know yeah. if they sent out like a you know, yearly really photo yeah. with you know, mm-hmm. like a Christmas card or. Mm. Very well. Uh, we must go. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfuckers. <laughs> so proud of you, Travis. <laughs> 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 right, let's meet back up. Uh, as you guys are stand up, uh, Ormid squirts you out, and as you come to the, to the steps of the Halls of Erudition, there's that moment of like, very good luck, and please, once again, if anything goes terribly wrong, let me know. I do not know if I can help, but at the very least, I can continue the work you could not finish. Can, can, can we have the, the pets back, Just please? I mean, <laughs> oh no, I suppose. Okay, we'll bring them back. Ooh. Thank you. Can I insight check Sprinkle and see if he wants to stay with Hosmo <gasps> and he likes me? <laughs> sure, make an insight check. <laughs> oh, I mean, you don't smell like her. Mm, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. 
Uh, I mean, Sprinkle comes back to you. Okay. Happy as before. Seem to have enjoyed the brief change of, of scenery, Don't. but <laughs> <laughs> like gently puts Frumpkin down and like scratches his head a little more and goes like, "Feel free to bring them back anytime. <laughs> you know where to find me usually." We're gonna come back. He's gonna have a fucking cat toy. In his yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what weasels like to sleep in? Sweet. Oh, well, uh, there are a number of things. Uh, as, as a keeper, you can have a small pouch that you keep over a shoulder. They can curl up inside and sleep and keep themselves warm. Uh, otherwise, blankets uh, steam, so there's a slight bit of dampness, but still warmed. Uh, it tends to be a very, very calming experience for most of us. Oh, that's nice. Um, otherwise, you know, shredded bits of, of parchment, uh, uh, loose natural cotton. Uh, you well, want to create a little burrow for them to curl up inside. Yes, it's yeah, very yeah, 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 yeah. Holy what shit. are like little special treats? Oh, well, right. I've been giving him like candy, but I don't know if that's like. Do I would not recommend candy. Not candy. No, it costs to the rest of their teeth to rot out. Oh. Uh, and kind of leans forward and like opens the mouth. Like, yeah, you see, there's already sort of the blackness of the gums. Oh, so I would, I would recommend per, perhaps like like tanned uh, meats, uh, you know, dried jerky, things to help clean the teeth as it's chewed as well. Um, what about, like, dried sweets? flowers as well can dried be kind of with, with bits of like bits of sugar maybe, but they like, try to keep it minimal. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he has been looking a little chunky. No, he's just, just he's, a little. He's not chunky at all. He's super he's skinny. Super skinny. <laughs> <laughs> he's, super, he's like super like. skinny. I thought I was like. <laughs> <laughs> That image is pretty good. Thank you. He's a little rat mammal on Ice Age. Yes! Yep, yep. Straight up. Oh my god. All right, well. I've got, you know, that's good to know. Thank you. Of course. Good luck. Goodbye. Do you think with his, by, do you think with his earth powers, he can just. Change a litter box, just like with probably, his mind. Probably. Amazing. So easy. Oh, I pick up from Okay. I don't forget from Okay. Mm -hmm. but you finished your it. research. Uh, where are you guys meeting up? We said we were going to meet up. The vulnerable vagrant. Is that okay. what we said? No. Yeah, we, we said we were going to meet up Pumas. <clears throat> Fucking awesome. All right. <laughs> you guys make your way back to the Penta Market, the familiar smells of voice. various uh, you know, pastries and cooked meats and foods, yeah. along with uh, the, the the smell of burning wood. Uh, there's the blacksmithy in the forge itself billowing out uh, its own black smoke, and it's 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 very nostalgic to wander back into the Penta Market after the times you had spent here together so early in your adventures. Eventually, you come upon. The uh, familiar green and gold wooden exterior of the invulnerable thing. Wow. Right. It's been a while. It's been a hot moment. It's been a while. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're about to go in there. We have a lot of money. Well, some of us do. Some of us went out and got tattoos. Really badass tattoos. Yep. Super stoked. Look at we shimmer. I uh -huh. shimmer. Look at that. Look at that. Look at this. Mm -hmm. The shoulder shimmering. That's well, the diamond redness. dust in me Is that right pus? now. Diamond oh, pass. it is pus! <laughs> oh god! Just clean it up a little bit. Oh, okay. Aquaful. Yeah, I'm sure he has some inside. You guys enter? We do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is Caleb come? there? Yeah, I pulled up. Uh, yeah. Here, He's here's coming. your cat. Yeah. He loved it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, my god. Look gosh. at him. He's well, fine. Well. We tell Caleb everything that no. we No. Frumpkin visually shows me everything. Does it work like that? Yeah. Telepathic link, man. Fuck. That's cool. It's like a camcorder and a cat. Yeah. It's like yeah. a little USB cat. <laughs> <laughs> you enter the the, USB -C. the warm chamber, you. the uh, you know the lanterns themselves still hanging, the light flickering, and the the nice uh, kind of dark green interior with with these kind of green velvet curtains that go over the the windows to each side, the little. Uh, the, the lantern light kind of giving this warm feel. You can see the uh, the tables set out with a handful of things on them. It's kind of sparse in here. Um, oh, wartime. Wartime. Um, you step inside, the door closes behind you. There, uh, you can see there's one familiar face, uh, a Pumat sitting at the counter and is currently in the process. You can see he has like a, like a band across the forehead that's kind of keeping the hair out of the front of his eyes and is in the process with his tongue sticking out of his mouth of writing down on a stack of papers before looking at him and go, 
Oh, hey there. Hey. Yeah. Oh, I have some familiar faces I haven't seen here in a long time. Uh, what, what, what's going on? You want me to get Brian for you? Oh, oh. oh. Yeah. Well, hi, Poo Matt. Hey, how oh, uh, it's been a oh, it's been a whole Nelly of a few months there, I tell you. Uh, so, uh, what's what's been keeping y'all so busy? Oh, travel, lots of yeah, travel, yeah, yeah. Yeah. all over. Work stuff mainly. Oh, hey, Some great did you finish those um, bracers? Quite. bracers? What? Which bracers are you talking about? I oh, just looked through that paperwork here. We had them made somewhere else. Yeah, it was jo in Joros. Was it? Do you have a receipt, perhaps, or like an order form? Claim, uh, claim ticket. Some sort mm -hmm. of a yeah, pickup. Yeah, 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 there's big rocks. Oh, that big, uh, oh yeah. never mind, yeah. never mind, never mind. They just okay. they got sorry. some. Sorry. Well, here, uh, let me get. Uh, <laughs> boom it! Boom it! You got some returning customers you haven't seen in a while. Here, uh, I'll just take this work upstairs in my room here. Uh, Everything been okay? It looks like you might have been robbed. It's very empty in here. Oh no, it's just at that point, you know, the uh, the curtain comes past and you can see the familiar face of Pumat Prime, uh, <laughs> sweat in the forehead, goggles in front of the eyes yeah. with like the long protractor lens in the front, <laughs> wearing kind of leather apron over the rest of it. Goes, yeah, we've been just uh, running the clock here around. The assembly had a lot of orders coming in over here the past few months, and it just, uh, you know, it's been less of a Less of a shop as much as it's been sort of an aid for the war effort. Oh, you know, it's trying to. to the front. What's up, sir? Sure. Sending supplies to the front, I said. Oh, yeah, trying to keep our soldiers alive and, uh, you know, <laughs> best we can at least. There's only so many of us to go around. <laughs> Where are the other two guys? They're like, oh, they're napping. It's like, oh, here, it. it's fine. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, just uh, sorry we're a little low. Uh, what you looking for? What can I help you with? Well, we've come with quite a bit of coin to spend, actually. We were quite looking back to returning to your place of business. Uh, any um, high <coughs> value items that perhaps. Uh, Unusual or otherwise. Yeah. Oh, well. Uh, and just so you know, your previous items have gone to good use, and I'll summon the, the sword and show the, the hilt of. Oh! We had it repaired. Well, that's a uh, sight for yeah. some flipping ice right there. Let me take yeah, a look yeah, at yeah, that yeah, thing. <laughs> Yes, I, I couldn't make this myself. This is uh, this is a mighty fine craftsmanship. It all started Look here, at the invulnerable vagrant. Wow, that's that's just that's just beautiful. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm taking it back. I'm gonna get a little little uh, whole teary eyed here and just uh, proud. Puts like the goggles up a bit. <laughs> wow, wow. If you ever looking to sell that, let me know. I will keep that in mind. Alrighty. Um. Hey, you guys are, uh, you guys are still doing the adventure in thing, right? Mm -hmm. Quite a bit these yes, days, yeah. Yes, yes. I got a, quite the problem solvers. I Done a few things, right, around here? Sure, sure. Quite first. Yeah, well, uh, would you be able to help me with something? You don't mind? Help oh, you, of maybe, course, I mean, yeah. What do you watch? Just what curious, do you I got do? gold, I got discounts, uh, for, you know, repeat customers especially, and, uh, uh you know. I do this whole bag of burr a favor. I just uh, like that. Well, here, I've been working on a new enchant for months, and uh, I finally got most of the way into finishing it, but I uh, kind of miscounted my materials and uh, had to hold my progress. Okay. What are so, you in need of? Well, uh, I need an additional vial of Swavain <laughs> Basilisk oil. Uh, my usual contact has been delayed up north, and, uh, and the assembly is leaning on me to finish this commission for one of their members, so it's kind Which of member? important. Whoa. Can't tell you, sort of, you know, privilege to the client, you understand? So. Um, but uh, I'd be happy to pay, like, or kind of looks at the paperwork here. Uh, about uh, 5,700 gold for the vial. 5,700 gold? Yeah. Wow. Swavane Basilisk oil. Where would yeah. you find that? Oh, you probably find it uh, in the Swarvian Islands, probably. Oh, yeah, obviously. Where is the, that? Those islands. Get out those maps. Well, well, wait. We can just ask him. Where are those? No, what I say, uh, I, I, they're, they're uh, south of the Menagerie Coast, like all along the, the southern base yeah. of Wild Mountain. You can find them, usually coastal. Um, Where's that in regards to Rumble Cusp? The Swarvian Islands. Oh shit! Uh, right next to them. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah, how so, soon do you need this, Pumat? Well, I mean, you know, sooner the better, but it's not a huge push. I just, preferably in the next well, couple well, months or so. Well, we, we may be making our way what? that direction pretty soon, so that okay, works out well. What is the date? 
today. We've been kind of out of commission for a bit. I don't know the exact day. Let me get it from no. Crit Rule Stats. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, I'll, I'll get it for you after the episode. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to figure out how much time that. we've got. Yeah, until. do you have a rough idea of how close we are to go Travel time for Con? Traveler? Uh, you Roughly. were... I'm. I have to look at the look at the full count of all totally the days. Now, say you're you're a number of weeks off. Okay. 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 You know, but it's getting there. Yeah. Just, uh, anyway, I, I need a full six ounces of this oil, so it's gonna. It's a. It's a if I get a procure for you a safe vial for it. Just don't touch the stuff. Oh, sure. Okay. Okay. No. I don't know if you're familiar with this way, but in basilisks, they're, uh, they're kind of a sea serpent type creature. You know, about 20, 25 feet long, if I recall correctly. Uh, their bites are hurting, you know, it's not too bad, but they uh, they excrete this oil around their body, helps them slither, and uh, well, it touches your skin, <laughs> kind of starts turning you to stone. They wait for you to sink to the bottom, and then they, wow. they eat off of the uh, the corpse, you know, Perfect. petrified. Uh, real dangerous, lots of, put a lot of, a lot of sailor stories about it, and you've actually, at this point, be like, oh shit, I thought that was just like a story, like a, like a song. Sounds right. Actually, it was well, clever. They turned them into stone. Oh, in this very That's map. Nice. Hey, trust Smart. me, I almost became a boom at piece of art when I almost forgot my gloves working on this thing. Whoa. 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 That was a close one. Anyway, um, yeah. So if you ever you get get that around back here, that'd be much appreciated. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll definitely <laughs> help you with that, Mister uh, Soul. Do you have any, anything in right now? Yeah, in the particular meantime. interest. Yeah, and it kind of pulls out like a. He says, most of the things up there are just for show. They're basic kind of plus one enchantments. Or, you know, you guys seem to, if he looks around here, I kind of, uh, he kind of came back here looking almighty, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey. Um, I, uh, we're trying to keep up. I got a couple, got some healing potions. Uh, and he pulls up. interested yeah. in those, yeah. He's got two healing potions, two greater healing potions, and one potion of superior healing for sale. Take them. I'm going to take all of them. How much are those? Are expensive? Mm -hmm. Well, they're 50 gold apiece for the base healing potions. They're 250 for the greater, and 2,500 apiece for the single uh, superior healing. That's more expensive than my tattoo. <laughs> 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 but in a pinch, that was a magic tattoo. How many superiors? Where'd it go? We Zero. took the only superior that we had for guzzled it really fast. In a pinch. Well worth it, though. You really care about me. Um, we'll take the superior and the two greater healings. <gasps> Alrighty. I'd actually let's say let's just let's just take them all because even a even a minor healing potion will wake you up if you got if you get knocked down. That's true. And then you can get back up again. Two regular. Well, you're saying take yeah. the whole kitten caboodle. Oh yeah, you get no worries. down and get up again. <laughs> By the way, you're never getting keep no, no, Can I never. just say again how nice it is to see another fear ball no, this side of the empire? It's it's been a while for me too. It's, yeah, it's been no, a, it's, it's, you guys have met, right? You, you've met. Me. No, never. Not. You've not met. I'm just I'm just trying out, just being sarcastic. About oh, what oh, oh, oh! Yeah, no, we met. We met once before. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh. Yeah, just but it's been a while, you know. I just uh, yeah, I like in the style. I feel oh, thank you. I mm. just just uh, was looking for a bit of a change. Yeah, yeah, and all you guys kind of really mix it up. 350 gold from everybody. For oh, I can do that. There you go. Just lay these out here for you. Yeah, it is, yes. Yeah. See fit. What kind of plus one things do you have? Oh, uh, plus one leather. I got like a plus one shield over there. Yeah. Uh, I got two of these potions of uh, maximum power. What is that? What is that? Uh, they're 750 gold what apiece. What do they do? Uh, let me pull it out for you. Maximum power. I've never heard of such a thing. Sounds metal. He pulls it, shows it to you. It's, it's a vial with like a glowing purple liquid that kind of just swirls around inside as he spins it a bit, and in the inside it kind of creates a small little vortex that calms down. Um, so it doesn't taste real great, to be honest, but uh, it really kind of. Bolsters uh, release of arcane power. You know these are pre uh, these are supposed to technically go to the front lines, but uh, you know I, I can pass it on to some friends here and some repeat customers if you don't mind. Uh, essentially, just so you know what they do is you drink it, and within one minute after drinking the potion, instead of rolling the dice for damage dealt on something, you can choose to instead use the highest number possible for each die. Whoa. So it's like a just maximum max damage. damage. On one turn. Uh, yeah, you have to use it within spell. a minute. No, it you it's whatever you have one minute okay. to use it, and so then get, if it happens. So ten rounds of maximum. No, 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 no. You have ten no, rounds nine. until yeah, it goes yeah, away. Yeah, and then once you cast the spell, one. it uses it. Got it. It's a scroll. 
It's a potion. potion. So if you have one thing that How does 5d10 damage, you do sure. 50. Mm-hmm. So you could... uh, that's 750 gold pieces for the single use, and uh, he looks at the uh, thing if at the If you roll a not, crit and not you for a single you know, use, I should probably keep one of these just because they were ordered. Mm-hmm. But exactly. if you want the one, for sure. But even I then, think I think the one because then, I mean, that could be a one-two combo that's pretty impressive because I can also make things vulnerable for, to one attack, so that would double damage. You We're, can do that? Yeah. Wow. We're definitely taking at least the one. We don't want to put you in any no. precarious, precarious positions. Or right. Any order. damage or melee damage? Or, or like, Magic or damage. For, any damage. It's ma- Wait, what? It's your ability? No, it's, ar- it's spell. That's, no, that's it's spell. only arcane. This right. is arcane only. Yeah. Oh, But your ability is an attack. Oh, is an attack. Like yes. Fireball? No, it would not affect a spell unless, oh, the, spell. unless like the spell had to too. roll to like, hit. Yeah, like sure. So like a ray spell or like, you know, a firebolt or yeah. something like you had to roll to I could I could double a fireball damage. Yeah. To one target is 12 d Yes, we'll take that. And then if it hits, I can double that damage. Got that one there for you. And I got this other. Oh, yeah. this, uh, sorry, everything else is pretty much on order except for this. And he pulls up what looks to be like a, a, a thick, squat, um, like metallic uh, casing. It looks it looks like like what would be like a heavy perfume bottle, but it's made of some sort of like like tin like material Person. with a, with a rubber capper on top. It's wrapped around. He goes, "This is uh, called oil of tempering. Yeah, you can like rub it on." Uh, Piece of, of armor, and uh, for the next twenty-four hours or so, it gets like a little, a little boost. Oh, yeah. This uh, one's got a. This one's only got two applications to it. Uh, how much of a boost? Well, plus one to your armor class for twenty-four hours. Take it. How much? How is much it? Just takes about an hour to apply it, um, and this one will run you about uh, twelve hundred gold pieces. A little risk for my blood. One AC. How much is that shield of plus one? Well, with plus one shield? Let me go ahead and check there real fast. Plus two, I'd be all over it. For 24 hours. It's rough. <clears throat> mm. uh, he goes ahead and starts going through the book in the back there as you're waiting patiently and you're sitting there. Um, What's your armor class, Caduceus? 18. You feel this searing pain in your back. This sudden burst of intense, deep, piercing pain. What? Your breath kind of halts in your chest for a second as the muscles in your torso seize. What? What? You. Did you touch it? I didn't touch anything. Something's attacking him. Suffer. Thirteen. Fish and chips. <coughs> yep. Puma oh. is the mole. What is, that? what is happening? Is there an invisible guy in There's the There's gotta be somebody invisible. He's your thing. You said a searing pain in the back of your neck? Or in your back? My back, right? Oh my gosh. Well, my thing lasts for an hour and I cast it in. Uh, Take 45 points of slashing damage. Oh what? shit. Well, and make a constitution a saving throw from the trees. You were being it. Why would we see it? Can we see it happen? Mm-hmm. Hold on. And, take, and make a constitution saving throw? Corrected my first. Okay. Uh, 15. 15, okay. From that. Intense pain. You feel something begin to, temper, like very briefly, begin to, to corrupt into your veins, and your body shrugs off whatever, whatever force or or thing is trying to pierce. And I as, cast detect magic and swing behind me. You guys he, kind of hear the strange oh, oh, from Caduceus. Uh, Caduceus leans forward. You all spin around and look, and they're kind of just creeping up out of the ground. You see. A female form, dull, kind of gray, almost blue-purple skin, black headband, bright red hair that kind of spills down in front of the face, cloak and armor with a deep grin as she draws one of two dark, envenomed daggers from the back of Caduceus. 
and kind of laughs <laughs> before shifting back into the ground like a ghost. Uh, what? Oh shit! Is that the is that the is that the name? Is that the is that the fourth horseman? Is that the is that the what? That's the one? Poo Matt says. Well, what was that? Are you okay? No. And that's where we'll pick it up. Oh! 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 I'm looking. I'm looking. Uh, I'm looking. Kata gas. The invulnerable. No, the, the, the inevitable end. The inevitable end. Inevitable end. Is, is that gas. what it looks like? I don't Charles know. Oh my god. god. What is it? But Kato no. Geist. Not, huh? Kato Geist. Is, is that it? Is that who it was? Why not? You have no idea. You've never seen them. <gasps> Vodka lives. I know. They, I thought it was. They're the chosen assassin of Wolf. So. Good chance. I just right, took a lot of fucking damage, like by the way. Fuck y'all. Well, we just bought a bunch of dark health potions, and... so. Oh, what did you do? God, How did God, you? Yeah, spider. Yeah. That came out of nowhere! That has to Keep be your hands in your pockets. My, I didn't hit anything with my damn swing, did I? No. Uh, you could roll. That's okay. I you mean, could roll. <laughs> I mean, Jury out. That was so out of nowhere. We're like shopping, an, like an assassin. Twenty-three. It's like assassins are really good at what they do. Yeah, that's, that's, it's, yeah. It's, it's that. Twenty-three. Holy Twenty-three. Shit. Into the ground. As as you swing outwards towards it, you swing wide towards this this kind of strange spectral mm. drow-like figure, and as it pulls into the ground, it uses yes, this reaction to shing, parry it out of the way. Oh. Does not hit. Damn. Twenty-three. Parry though. Yep. Yes. Yeah, you said spectral. She's a specter. The inevitable end. I wrote down a specter. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Exactly Fuck. All right. right. That's fine. Drown. So we'll pick up spectre. with yeah. whatever's yeah. happening now in the invulnerable vagrant. Shopping episode. Next week. Protect Puma. <laughs> <laughs> Protect Puma. Oh, this is like full on bottle room blitz. We can actually like like. Everything's a weapon. Oh, oh yeah, everything. Oh, There's worry. nothing in the. In the uh, oh, you oh, don't. Oh, yes, you don't. Yes, we're you gonna don't. fight. There's a map we're doing in the a shop. combat cam for the end of the yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sponsored yeah, by yeah, Dwarven yeah, Forge. Yeah. Check them out at dwarvenforge.com. Give you a fucking bar round of the shop. You guys are <laughs> oh. fighting inside the invulnerable vendor right next to me. So we'll pick up on that. Where's my chair? Holy. Next Thursday. Until then, guys. Oh. Thank you so much for yes. joining us. Wow. We love you very much. And is it Thursday? Is it yet? Thursday yet? Good night. Oh, oh my God. God.